What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hopefully we are live. Looks like it's working. Good evening, Mike here, Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. Hopefully you can hear me and see me. Please let me know in the chat if either of those is a reality for you currently in your world. It is Saturday the 6th of April, 2024. Two days until the eclipse, if you're looking forward to that. I get an eclipse every time I uh, sit down. I can't see my uh, stuff. My junk. That's what happens when you get older. Lucky man says Shane, but yes, good. Nick Barnes says all good here, excellent stuff. Glenn says all good, excellent, all in sync. That's a lot we like to see is make sure the overhead camera is working and is relatively in focus. Yep, that seems to be is that actually working. Yep, that actually seems to be working. Believe it or not, that is still the overhead webcam, the uh, Obspot 4K. It's great. Happy days. Uh, and desktop stream, is that visible? Nope, that's not visible. Right, let's make some adjustment there. Not device not connected. How dare you. There we go, that is working now. Excellent stuff. So let's go back to the main camera. So yeah, everything is good. Overhead's working. We're all good. We were all mubbed in for the evening. Great stuff. So, anyway. So tonight you've got a pretty good idea of what's going to be happening. Um, we've got the new Thermal Take Series 330 case. And Thermal Take UK, wonderful people they are. Well, Adam actually is the wonderful person. Sorry to name drop there. Uh, Adam actually sent over the case for review probably a good month or so ago. And part of the review process, he said, look, let us, we'll send you a motherboard and some stuff so you can actually demonstrate how the whole back to front or project zero or kind of reverse wiring, how it all actually works. And that way then, if you've got viewers, you've got comments, questions or whatever, you can go through it with them and kind of uh, get their ideas, get their take on it, see what the kind of expectations are and uh, see if there's any kind of questions that come out in a big way that people are very interested in or just are not sure what the is going on. So waited a while, I wasn't expecting what they sent. So this isn't for me to keep by the way, this is purely on loan. So this is gonna be going back to Thermal Take on Wednesday morning. So I've got a couple more days with them yet. There it is, I've got them down here. So probably the star of the show and probably the most expensive piece of hardware that I'm ever gonna keep in my hands for any period of time is this bad boy. So if there's any of you out there watching at the moment and you're feeling a little bit flush, maybe you've, your numbers have come up on the lotto this weekend or you're just thinking, well, it's going to be the eclipse in a couple of days time. The world's going to end anyway. So what the hell? I'll just spend what I've got now. There are affiliate links in the video description for those of you that want to uh, get yourselves one of these. So this is the uh, Asus. <coughs> Sorry. The Asus. <coughs> Now available for very reasonable prices. Now this is the ROG Strix Gaming. This is the BTF edition of the RTX 4090. 
this is an absolute monster beast of a card. If you thought the Founders Edition 4090 was a big card, you ain't seen nothing. This thing is mental, absolutely mental. And uh, 24 gigs of RAM, so it should last a little while. Might have a little bit of longevity on the shelves with this one. So this is one of those unicorn products which basically doesn't exist, or at least no one's ever gonna see one in real life. Well, now you are. Thank you very much, Ugly Bob, for the super chat there. Thanks, Steve. Times two, there was one a little bit earlier as well. So thank you very much for that. The Disco 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 one to start with. So Old Wells sent £10 in as a super chat. It says, my grandfather invented cold air balloon, but it never really took off. <laughs> Keep those dad jokes coming, everybody. Excellent stuff. Uh, there was another one earlier as well, super chat. I think it was the, uh, the, uh, the mandatory Disco Disco Disco. There we are. Disco Disco Yellow Sticker Disco. This is far from yellow stickers. Even if I spent the last three years shopping carefully and buying with yellow sticker bargains, for those of you outside of the UK or you're not too sure, yellow stickers are basically, if you go to your local supermarket when stuff's almost out of date or past sell by or damaged packaging, whatever, they put a yellow sticker on it generally or orange, whatever it might be. So you get a reduction, so you get cheap stuff. Uh, this I don't see for the foreseeable having a yellow sticker on it. It's got some... Uh, Embossed, glowy stuff. I was flinged. Oh, but he, but he stuck his claw on the carpet. Uh, so yeah, this is the 4090 OC edition. This is what is known as the BTF edition. So BTF, I've called this incorrectly numerous times. And if you're not sure what it is, BTF, I think of it as back to front. So essentially what this means is when you're creating or building your system, all of your wiring is as minimal as is physically possible. The specific thing with this, the BTF edition, this has a kind of golden finger at the back, or golden fingers I should say, multiple of. So this can pull up to 600 watts actually through the motherboard. So the days of the, uh, the 12 plus four pin, the high power connector, being visible and not being able to be bent is basically coming to an end, at least as far as actually being visible. You still have to use a power connection to the motherboard because the motherboard isn't gonna give you 600 watts for nothing. So we're gonna go through and show you how that all works a little bit later on. But this is the graphics card. So uh, we might as well just take this out of the box now and have a, have a very quick look at it because I'm guessing there's gonna be some of you that are intrigued to what you actually get for the best part of 2000 pounds here in the UK for a graphics card. And uh, it is, it, it's just nuts. It is absolutely nuts. So there we go. I like it, Ivory Wolfman says, so I see you sold your soul. You would need to sell at least a body part, I think, to uh, purchase one of these. Or just be one of those people that has saved and has worked hard. I'm imagining there are gonna be people that will buy this sort of thing because they just don't want to faff around, they don't want to do half measures, and they're just like, well, what the hell, let's just do this, get it over and done with, and then I'm good for the next, I don't know, five, ten years, whatever it might be. So let's open up and see what is going on here. So inside, no uh, RGB, no, I would actually love it, so that when you open this, it made a noise, like those cards you can buy, like birthday cards and Christmas cards. So you open these, because that's what's just happened to all your savings. They've gone up in smoke. Sorry. If anyone from Asus is watching, my apologies. It's, it's Cass fault, which leads me astray. Let's try and get this thing out. This is absolutely incredulous. So, this is heavy and big. That is a graphics card. For those of you that are old enough to remember the film Crocodile Dundee, there's a rather famous section in that film where Crocodile Dundee and his uh, girlfriend, or soon to be girlfriend, I guess, at the time, uh, were about to be mugged. So let's, uh, where are we? 
I'm looking for a small graphics card to put alongside this, or just a normal graphics card, really. Just so you can see how small... Actually... I know a small thing you could put next to it. I'm not putting that small thing next to it. Because I'm sure we'll get taken off there. How many cracks did that cost, Mike? Right, this is an RTX 3060 Ti. A, uh, a somewhat more affordable graphics card, let's say. And this is just ridiculous. So, there's a 3060 Ti. So, look out, that man's got a graphics card. That's not a graphics card. That's a graphics card. The state of it. Unbelievable. That is absolutely gargantuan. On the overhead there, you can see it. So just so you can get some kind of idea of how physically big that actually is. Now don't get me wrong, the 3060 Ti isn't a huge card. It's not massive. It's, but it's a regular-ish size graphics card, what most people are used to. So, yeah. There you go. The comparison there is absolutely ridiculous. Now there is actually a tab here, which I'm not too sure if that comes off. It doesn't appear like it does. So I think that is where the normal version would have had its power connector. But, as you can possibly see straight away, there is something slightly unusual about the PCI Express slot. Other than the fact that it's there and it looks tiny, we've now got this extra section here. So possibly you can see that I'm not sure if you can particularly well. Let's see if we can zoom you in a bit that so you can get a better idea of what is actually going on. It's not Rick Leon, so there's no cats for it. It's no, not ours. No cats have been sold to uh, facilitate this. So that is basically a massive copper finger, no, as is that one. No graphics card is worth cats. Can you measure how long it is as well? Okay, um, I'm going to measure it, but I've got a feeling that my measure is actually not going to be... Oh no, we're all right. We're good. So this is approximately, well, bang on 14 inches. So that is 355 millimeters in length. Sideways, looking at about, what are we going to say? About five and a half inches, roughly, on the slack. On the slack. And for the depth, you're looking at about 40 millimeters, uh, sorry, 70 millimeters or about two and seven eighths of an inch. If that is even a measurement, it Kelly works. Says, I bet if you remove that cap, there is a regular connection. Well, that is what I was just looking at and it doesn't appear that there is. I think they have actually hobbled this so that that cap does not come off. There is a cover on it, but Right, that does come off, so that is just purely a blanking plate. Now this is something which I really should stress with this particular graphics card, that this is the BTF version, as you're obviously relatively aware already. Uh, let's zoom that back out a minute. <whistles> boom, 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 boom. That'll do. So. As you can probably guess, this is a specific edition. So this is the BTF version, or back to front. I call it back to front, it isn't actually back to front. It's BTF, bizarrely, stands for back to the future. So it should be BTTF, back to the future. But I'm guessing at some point along the lines, um, there was some kind of communications issue and it doesn't work out that way. So this is BTF. Project Zero, all those kinds of nomenclatures, if that's the right word, uh, they're all kind of the same sort of principle. So they allow you to wire up your graphics cards and your motherboard from the back of the case, rather than being visible wires on show at the front. So for a extremely clean looking build, which some people will prefer because cable management is a pain in the backside, it really is. Yes, Kath? It's a little bit off topic. Random guy, for productivity, what card should I go for? 4060 Ti or a 7700XT? Uh, for productivity, it's hard to say. They're both very similar. 
if you're going for pro productivity, it depends what productivity it is. If it's, if it's Adobe Premiere, NVIDIA cards all the way. Um, the, the, I would argue that there isn't a AMD card which equals what an NVIDIA card can do due to the fact of that CUDA acceleration, which is far, far superior in Adobe Premiere, at least on the timeline. When it comes to just flat out rendering, kind of not a huge amount between them, but yeah. If, you're, if it's productivity, I think probably I would go NVIDIA. I have done myself. I've got multiple AMD cards and I've just bought myself. This, actually yesterday I bought this, which is a slightly smaller beast, uh, the GeForce 4070 Super. This actually I reviewed about three or four months ago and MSI were like, oh, possibly at the end of the review cycle, we'll let you have the card. And they didn't, so I bought one. So I put my money where my mouth is. I said they nailed it in the review, and I think they personally did, so I actually went and bought one. So I have purchased this off eBay from VIP Computers on their eBay shop. Uh, got a 10% deal, Sprout 10 is the eBay deal at the moment. And I've managed to pick this up for basically the same price as a uh, 7900 GRE. So I'm pretty pleased. That has been installed today, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a happy person. And sadly, I don't have the uh, the money to go for something like this, but I honestly don't know if I even would if I had the money because it is just it's an extremely imposing piece of hardware. So you've got three massive fans on there, as you can see, and an absolutely eye-wateringly heavy heat sink in there to keep everything nice and cool. This car is built like a literal tank. Like there's a Clearly lots of plastic on there, but most of it is actually metal. So this front section, metal. The fans itself are plastic, obviously, but this whole section is metal. The back plate in its entirety is all metal, as you can, sounds like a heatsink from, well, just the splines on heatsink. It's huge, it's massive. There's a lot of metal here. I haven't even weighed this thing. I. I have no idea, but I gotta say it's it's got to be heading towards two kilos. It's got to be heading towards the bathroom scales, not kitchen. Yeah, and the kitchen scales don't go that high, so it would be the bathroom scales. It's not it's bathroom, it's an absolute uh, weird card. The weird part gets to there as well. So technically, this is a dual slot card because it only has two slots there. Although obviously, it does dip down to three point five slot territory. With the overhang but because this is all metal as well here all of this is part of the heat sink assembly so the kind of the clasp section is almost like an afterthought really but yeah an absolutely insane graphics card and no obvious section for actually powering it which makes me think actually that maybe they could have done something different with this to maybe hide that a little bit blank it off maybe but then that is where all the errors come out from the gpu Uh, this was loan. This is on loan from Thermal Tate UK. Uh, Adam, if he's in the chat at some point, he'll uh, say hello. Adam was very gracious and uh, loaned it to us. So we've only got it for what well, arrived, I think, on the fourth, and it goes back on Wednesday. So they're collecting this Wednesday morning. So I've got a couple more days with it. Got Sunday, not really much I can do, but Monday and Tuesday, I'll I'll be doing some more testing, uh, possibly individual reviews. I'm not too sure. It's one of those things that. I don't think I'm really the right person to be reviewing a card like this because it's just bonkers. It really is. It's completely out of my comfort zone altogether. It really is. Uh, bizarrely, it's even got a performance mode or silent mode switch on it as well, which, yeah, regardless whichever one you want to do, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. So that is the graphics card. So the extra gold fingers are basically power. That's where the power comes from. So that is what is connected to the motherboard. The motherboard, if you're purchasing ASUS BTF stuff, anything from the BTF range, they all work together. If it's not in the BTF range, then you're gonna have to plan ahead a little bit. So the BTF motherboard will take a BTF graphics card or a standard traditional graphics card. The BTF graphics card, on the other hand, will only, and I must stress this a lot, it will only ever work in a BTF format motherboard. So if you are buying this graphics card, don't think you can just go and buy any motherboard on the market, you can't. 
it has to go in a BTF motherboard or Back to the Future motherboard and from a Zeus. Depending on what happens with other manufacturers, whether or not they adopt the same connectivity here, I'm not too sure. As far as I'm aware, this isn't part of the PCI Express Gen 5 setup or even Gen 6 as far as I know. This is something which is proprietary to ASUS. So obviously do be careful. If, you're, if you are thinking of splashing out, if Ugly Bob's had way too many cans and he thinks, right, I'm going to get one, you can have to buy a motherboard to go with it. That's a, a definite thing. Yes, Kath? This way up, but can it taste spread? Um, it probably could. I don't think these actually get overly hot, so I don't think it would actually toast bread, but never say never. And Riley asks, could a BTF motherboard be prone to damage for the GPU power connector? Um, yes, much like any connector, although because it is gold slots, like a PCI Express slot, it's going to be far more resilient to repeated insertions and extractions than the 12 volt high power cable connection. So that is where the difference is. The 12 volt high power connector is good for, I think, 50 to 100 insertions, whereas that probably in the hundreds, if not thousands. Ugly Bob wants to know, but can you grate cheese on it? Um, you probably can grate cheese on it, but we, 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 we definitely won't be finding that out today. So that, anyway, that is the 4090 ROG Strix. We'll get rid of that. We'll be seeing more of this in a minute. We will, we will grate cheese, but not on this. <laughs> we definitely revisit grate cheese. All right, get in the box. Let's put this back away. I'm, I am somewhat scared of actually handling this card and having it here in the house, because if it goes wrong or something gets damaged or whatever, um, <laughs> I'm not too sure if I'm on the hook for the full price or whether they've got insurance. I would guess they've got insurance. I would hope they have insurance. They don't need insurance though. Who really needs a ridiculously expensive card like that? David Hardcastle. Uh, David Hardcastle. Now that is actually a very good question. Who actually needs a graphics card like that? Now that is the thing. Someone with a heavy door. If you're if you are someone who works on your computer for a living and you can get your job done significantly faster with that graphics card, then it's a no-brainer. You would buy it purely because it will make your job quicker, you can get more done, you can earn more money. So it's one of those investments. Much like any other uh, trade, if you're a plumber, plasterer, whatever, if there is a tool which will make your job considerably faster, then you will buy it because it will make your job faster and you can get more done, you can earn more money. From a gamer's perspective, if you have... A considerable amount of excess funds and gaming is your thing then again it's one of those things it's if you want to spend the money do it it's like people with custom cars a car will get you from a to b a lamborghini will get you from a to b in style faster and probably pull some girls on the way it's that kind of scenario it's you're buying an elite product and in terms of performance it's going to be the best performance that you can get full stop without going kind of extremely exotic so if you just want the best of the best and you want it now that is what you gotta buy can it play fortnite it can play fortnite allegedly i think actually someone played fortnite at 8k with everything turned on to the f like full ray tracing and it was still amazing so yeah jason cheers jason thanks for stopping by uh, what do I want now? Yeah, right. So, if you're going down the BTF route, this is potentially the motherboard. There's not a lot of BTF motherboards on the market. If you have a quick Google search, there's, yeah, less than a handful. So, it's very, very limited. This is an extremely, and I can't kind of, um, I can't stress this enough. This is an extremely, extremely niche elite product for those people that just want to have the best or to have something which is new and expensive, which this is. So this is the ROG Maximus Z790 Hero BTF. Hence, it's got the BTF on there. If you buy this board and it doesn't have a BTF sticker, you just get the normal Hero version, it won't work with that graphics card. It will work with any other 4090 but it won't work with a BTF. 
So that's what the key thing is here. We're looking at mar marrying up these technologies. So when you're purchasing stuff, if you go for a BTF board, ideally you want a BTF card. Now there, are, there will be other models available, lower end ones, more affordable ones, somewhat less exotic. So this that's the whole point of this stream really, is just to kind of not educate you because that's a bit condescending, but just to kind of emphasize the message that this is a new technology from ASUS, from MSI, no doubt others will follow as well. The whole kind of Project Zero or BTF thing is something that which we kind of do need to bear in mind. And especially as we are seeing actually a considerable number of cases on the market which will support this technology, the reverse wiring, Project Zero, BTF, etc. So you're going to see it more and more. And I know that people are going to be interested in thinking, well, what difference does it make? Can I use my normal ATX motherboard in a BTF case or a Project Zero case or one which supports backward wiring? And the answer is generally yes, you can. They will all fit ATX, but they won't all fit BTF style boards. Anyway, we'll get onto that shortly. Yes, Gaff. While Bill says BTF sounds built to fail. Built to fail. I wish that was true. I was actually, I'll be honest with you, as I generally am in reviews and also the live streams, probably more so in the live streams. Yeah, I'll, 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 I've said this before numerous times that I think that the whole Project Zero and BTF thing is absolutely pointless. And it is. Let's be honest with you. It is pointless. It's it's one of those things which it doesn't really add much in terms of functionality other than the fact that it looks much cleaner. In terms of flexibility for cable management, oh my God, it makes life so much more easy. It just it's a completely different methodology of assembling a PC and it makes it much much easier but making it easier you do also have those caveats of you have to have all of your kind of things in the right order so you have to have a motherboard that supports the case you want to use you got to make sure that all the connections are right and all that kind of stuff so there are pitfalls to it but I think it's one of those technologies where as it emerges and it evolves I think probably most PCs will end up going this way to some extent. But anyway, let's take a look at this board. So this is Z790. This supports up to the 14900KS. Ridiculous amount of VRMs. This is just a absolutely blingtastic motherboard. Like, how many motherboards have got a plastic insert tray? I don't even know why they've got that. It serves no purpose. But that mean that doesn't mean I don't like it. Because <laughs> this... This is nuts. Now, you do have to be careful with these boards when you're taking them out because if you look at the front section, so this is what the board looks like. This also is extremely heavy. Now, this is designed for like extreme overclocking and basically just being a very heavy duty product, built to last. So, massive heat sinks here. Also, there is an ROG illuminated panel which goes here. The heat sinks here. This heat sink on its own at the top basically weighs the same as pretty much all of the heat sinks on my motherboard in the background put together. This is a weighty board, it really is. And even on here, PCI Express slot, there is. Bear with me a moment. I've got a very sneaking suspicion that the uh, the previous occupant. Oh, I shouldn't put it down like that. You gotta be careful. Because all of your connections are on the back and they are exposed. So if you uh, if you drop it or do something with it, you see all those little pins? that are normally slightly protected. They are not so protected anymore. So I just noticed that it looks like there is an M.2 drive in here. And I don't remember putting it in there. So let's see what is in here and potentially what is on it. Because I have no idea. Nice one. Change, go and change. Kelly, are you in the UK or are you in America? Because if you're in America, uh, that word has a very different meaning. <laughs> ah. Right, there appears to be a 970 Evo in there, which um, I didn't put in there. So I don't know whose drive that is. 
I might have to message Calf. Oh no, you can't, can you? Is Adam in the chat? <laughs> Whose drive is this anyway? I think Bob thinks he's a bit from collection. Oh, I may have just inherited a drive. I don't think he said in the message that he was sending a, a drive, but maybe he did. I don't know. Well, we've all got to go back. You haven't, have you? We've all got to go back, but. You can just take that out and get. I would take it out and get. Oops. Get Adam to say where it's got to go. Yeah. Hmm. Well, if it's a review sample, maybe they put it in there so for testing purposes. So you don't have to install everything. That would be very good. Anyway, this is the heatsink for the drive. Now you can probably see this. This is a massive, solid lump. That's, there's no other words that you can use for it, really. This thing is ridiculous. That is solid metal. So that is a heat sink and a half. That is going to keep the drive extremely cool. So I'm going to put that back in. Have a sneaky look to see what's on it. I do want to have a Thinking sneaky look. I, I do. I do want to have a little look and see what's on there. But at the same time, I don't want to use it because it could be uh, it could be something bad on there. It could be viruses and all sorts. I don't know. I will check with uh, he who must be obeyed, Mr. Adam from Thrill Take, and see what he says. Anyway, back to the board. Let me uh, close this down a minute. I assume that's selling something then, is it? Yeah, the, uh, the refurb market, how do you find it? At the moment, the refurb market here is pretty good. It's pretty hot because there's lots of sales discounts on. Right. But, um, yeah, it depends where you are, really. Anyway, back to the board. So, a uh, big cover down here. We've got the LCD, uh, what was it, eight segment, nine segment, seven segment, whatever it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven segment, LEDs there for troubleshooting should you need to. There's a diagnostic D-LED above that. There is actually, on this front section, there is actually a header, which I can't actually see what it says. Uh, I have no idea what that is. I'm assuming they've probably thought forward a little bit, and that header there is going to be the CPU optional, or... Huh? They're in the 8. Oh, they're in the 8, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go on eBay, use the code SPROUT10 and check out PC parts for less. Good deals. Uh, that's basically VIP Computers Outlet. So that header there, I think, is going to be a pump header. So, obviously, if you're putting a water pump on this, that is one of the few things that you would have to wire up from this side. So, a water pump is going to have a, a cable coming off it to power the pump itself. So, that is going to plug in there. I think I have actually bent the addressable RGB header already. Anyway, moving on. So um, underneath here, heatsink for more M.2 drives. Actually, I'm going to have to open those up as well, because you never know. There might be M.2 drives in here. I doubt it, but you never know. It's a shame, really, that having spent 700 plus pounds on a motherboard that uh, there isn't some kind of release clasp on this. Holy balls. Only two PCIe slots. Um, it does appear that way at the moment. So, there is the heatsink underneath there. Oh, sorry, the, the chipset. <clears throat> so you can install what would appear to be four drives on here. So, one, two, three, four. Let's put the overhead on. Why no hole for the pump cable? Yeah, that would have been a good idea. So, PCI Express Gen 5 slot on the top, times 16. <coughs> You've got your M.2s there. Those are all going to be PCI Express Gen 4 at a minimum. I'm not too sure the exact specs. I do need to do some reading up on this. And at the bottom here, you've got another PCI Express. I would imagine that is, oh, actually, yeah, Gen 4. So, that's a times 4 Gen 4 slot fully wired. So for things like capture cards, that's going to be awesome. What I will kind of grab your attention towards is this section here. Williams has done it. It's on the box about how many PCI slots. It does. That is it. There's no more slots. Oh, in terms of the specs of them. Well, um, 
No, it doesn't say the specs on the back. But yeah, it is, it is only two PCI Express slots. And well, that's only four. Yeah, I was unsure if there was going to be some hidden under the cover. That would be a slightly bizarre thing to do. So let's get this zoomed in. Sorry about the lack of, lack of picture quality, but that's what it is. So there is your PCI Express power coming through there. So that is your BTF slot, or back to front, or back to the future. So that is essentially going to be able to supply you with up to 600 watts of PCI Express power. So this is the power on this side, where you've got those metal prongs there, and the smaller pins in here, which are more like kind of PCI Express pins, but a bit bigger, those are your sense pins. So one pin means 100 watt, 150 watts, two pins, 300 watts, four pi uh, three pins would be 450 watts, and four pins would be 600 watts, if that makes sense. So whichever one it makes contact with, the graphics card plugs in, it says, right, I need 500 and I need 450 watts, <coughs> that's what it's going to give you. So yeah, that is basically it. The only other thing on this board which is on this side that I can see really, other than you've got the things like your M.2s, obviously you've got your CMOS battery, um, there is a thermal sensor probe just down here in the corner. So that is on this side and in the top corner, which you can't quite see. So there is the... Uh, LCD display, there's also a, a test button at the top, so you can switch that on or off, and also there's that header there. It looks like there's actually another two pins there, I'm not too sure what those are for. I'll get a close up. Yes, Kath? I wonder are all the PCI lanes go into the SSD and GPU? Well, they'll be split, so the chipset, the 790, will supply probably I'm going to guess the bottom three M.2s and your PCI Express slot down here. The CPU is going to supply PCI Express Gen 5 to this top slot and also Gen 5 to the Times 16 slot here. It's going to be sending some of the lanes out to the rear I.O. as well. Possibly that slot as well. So best case scenario is going to be the top three sections there and those three and that are going to be from the chipset. It's that kind of deal. Uh, also in here, there is a push button there. So there's one for resetting the BIOS, I think that is. And it's, there's a start button, so you can start the PC. So if you're doing benchmarking, bench testing, press that to turn on the power. And there's also a Q button, which you can program actually in the BIOS to do various things, either to reset the BIOS, to boot into the safe mode, uh, to turn off your RGBs, whatever. You can program it to do either of those things, or either of those things. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the board. Let's have a look on the side. So in terms of your I.O., got some quite nice I.O. here. Can you actually see that? No, hang on. So there's your I.O. on the back. So you've got a um, clear CMOS button, BIOS flashback button, a single HDMI, a bunch of USB ports there. 2.5 gig LAN, you also got your connections there for the Wi-Fi antenna. This has got Wi-Fi 7, which is a new standard, Wi-Fi 7, and you've also got optical output, and you've got your traditional analog outputs for your audio. So yeah, all in all, lots of stuff there. Three USB ports, uh, those two there I believe are Thunderbolt, and that is going to be USB, so basically USB 4. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Zoom out, <coughs> zoom back, there we go. So, there you go, there is a look at the board. I am terrified of actually using this board, I am, genuinely. Because all those pins, well, they're all good. So. Let's take a quick look at the pins on the back. So this is basically what your traditional motherboard is going to have. So at the top here, you've got your EPS connection. So you've got two lots of eight. You've also got an addressable RGB header at the top there. Then you've got a bank of fan headers. So that's going to be chassis fan, CPU fan, and pump fan, or pump, PWM. Then you've got your 24-pin power connector, 
you've got your USB 3s, USB type C. Then going down to this section here, you've got your 12 volt high power. So you don't lose the 12 volt high power connection, it just gets moved around. So that plugs into there. You've also then got four SATAs there. You've got your front IO down in this bottom section, another fan header, another USB 3.0 type A, a couple of USB 2.0s, three fan headers. Then you've got two addressable RGB and one 12 volt RGB. And then finally over this side for our audio, you've got your HD audio connection. So basically if you imagine this just being on this side, it's the same thing. It's exactly the same layout really in terms of where the physical connectors are. It's just rather than the pinouts being on the normal side, they've moved them to the back. So that in a lot of cases is gonna make things considerably easier. So say for instance, you want to, um, I don't know, plug in another SATA drive. Traditionally, if you're plugging in a SATA drive, there's a good chance that it's gonna overhang one of these SATA ports. So you're gonna to have to take out your graphics card. If you've got water cooling, you're gonna to have to take off your loop, drain the loop down, all that kind of stuff, which is a real pain in the backside. Even just taking a graphics card out can be a pain because sometimes they don't wanna come out and you've gotta get a screwdriver and poke at the release tab to try and get the damn thing out. Whereas this, you just literally plug it in from the back because there is gonna be no obstructions other than your case panel on the back. So that's pretty cool. And in terms of wiring up new devices, very easy to get to. Again, stuff like this down here. Your front panel IO generally is an absolute ass to get to because of where it is normally on this side of the board because of how cramped things are. It's normally down in this corner here. And again, if you've got your graphics card there or it's really close to the bottom, maybe you've got some fans in front blowing up air, whatever you've got going on in your case. This basically makes it so everything is on the back. Now, this normally would have a cover here anyway, covering up all this stuff, but essentially you're just moving it all around. So that is basically a kind of a rough overview of how the board works and the BTF solution. So now let's take a look at a case and see how this actually works in reality when you're putting it together. So we're gonna pull out the Series 300 and which way around does this go? I think that's, the, yeah, that way around. So you've got the foam to put it on for when you're not doing stuff with it to basically keep the pins in place. This reminds me of the old days when you used to buy an Intel or AMD processor or even a Cyrix, and it would come in a little box with a, a foam insert and the pins would sit into the foam so they didn't get damaged in transit. Th this reminds me very much of that. And actually, before we go too far, I'm gonna put this back into position. This itself, again, very heavy. There's a, there's a lot of metal here. And I'll try and read some of your comments while I do it. What's that, William Bodie saying, PS Cannabis is now legal in Germany. Luckily, my mic's unboxing top is basically a microfiber. There we go, good as new. Uh, Alessa says, I'd trade in my girlfriend for that motherboard. Eek. <laughs> uh, Hugh Luttrell says, a lot of work for a 69 year old man. He had a fire, that's why he's not been about. Oh dear, sorry to hear that. David Anderson says, maybe the purpose of the plastic tray? What's that, to prevent the, the um, oh yeah, for when you're working on it, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know, I really don't, not too sure. Oh, that says, yeah, this is an anti-static tray, apparently. I don't understand what you would actually use it for. Just say there, it is anti-static, but it was in that position. But you need to see this next to it for a comparison of size. Oh my goodness. 
Ugly Bob wants to see it. Ugly Bob's got a lot to answer for. So uh, we don't have a banana for scale, but we've got the next best thing. So it's approximately um, three quarters of a schlong tall. Uh, sorry. One and a quarter schlongs tall and um, roughly about a schlong wide. Thank you very much. With a tip for depth. <laughs> A tip for depth. <laughs> oh, God. James Massey says the tray is to put your or organs on when you're paying. <laughs> That's probably not far off the truth. So, yeah, this motherboard, I think, um, from just looking around, it looks like it's somewhere in the region of about £700 plus. Uh, you do get some accessories with it, which... I'm probably not even going to go through, to be honest with you, because why? Why would you want to? For, for that sort of money, I don't want accessories. I want someone to come and fit it for me. Now, which way round did this go in the box, or does it really matter? That way round. This is terrible. If it was mine, I would be a little bit less, uh, I won't say scared, but slightly less cautious. There we go. So that is that. Uh, what's that? 875 euros in Germany. Brilliant. Asus. Brilliant. Does it vibrate? Uh, no. It opens bottles. JB Mods is there. Says uh, hello and how are how is everybody? Hello. Just checking in on the on the chat there. So yeah, we're all good. Right. Do a Linus and drop it. Oh my goodness. I don't know how, uh, his heart rate must be absolutely uh, off the chart. Is that So next up, I'm going to get the case out of the Series 330. We'll have a quick look at that. And then we're going to put the motherboard in and show you basically how everything is wired. And it is actually very, very cool. And it's actually quite easy to show on camera as well, which is another benefit for the, uh, the YouTube generation. So I kind of hope it does make it into the more mainstream market. The cases already have. Because the cases are actually really inexpensive, especially the Series 300. Uh, they're <coughs> currently on special offer at the moment at scan.co.uk. I did see them somewhere else as well. They're reduced down now. They're £10 off what they were originally. So they are considerably well under the £100 mark. And they come with a couple of fans as well, which is always nice to see. And talking of nice to see, I better take the side panel glass off. Because as you'll be seeing Kath, and she won't be liking that very much at all. So this is the uh, the Series 330. You've seen this before on the channel. Uh, this was actually the same piece, well, the same case that we did the build for recently for Colin for his 80th. And it is a, a very nice looking case. I think they've done a very good job tying in the colours now, the way they have. So everything is a nice bright shiny white, and yeah, it's uh, it's pretty darn nice looking. And the front panel, you can remove quite easily, get the whole thing off. You've got the CT140 fans pre-installed and pre-wired, ready to go for the RGB goodness. You can swap them out if you want to for 120s. You put three 120s in there or a 360mm radiator. Although, with this particular case, if you are putting in the 4090 card, such as the one that we're using here today, you won't be able to put a 360mm radiator in the front but you can still put a radiator in the top. So that's pretty nice. Uh, usual refinements, so removable panel here at the bottom, so you can put in the LCD uh, panel, the readout panel, which hopefully you can just about see in the background here. Can't see if you can, yep, you can. So the Series 500 and the 300 and the 330, that panel is all interchangeable. So that's, uh, that's kind of nice. And I suppose if we take the back panel off now, we can have a look and you can see where the whole back to front or back to the future or barefoot tech. Barefoot tech. That's what David said it should be called. <laughs> it is barefoot tech, yeah. So let's spin this round so you can see what's going on in the back. So this is actually a really nice layout. 
and the fact they've whited out the cables as well makes it even nicer. So if you consider what the motherboard is like, we had all those bits down the side here, You've got your front IO along these channels at the bottom, you've got your EPS connectors at the top here, or were they there? No, I think they're there, so that's the fan ones there. And this case, I cannot stress this enough, although I probably can, this case, if you like it, you don't have to think, oh God, I can only use a back to front motherboard. This is 150% compatible, if that is a thing. You can't have more than 100%, that's a lie. Um, this is completely compatible with any micro ATX or ATX or even extended ATX motherboard on the market. All of those will fit in here absolutely normally. No worries, you don't have to make any sort of concerns about where the panels or ports are going to be. Normal ATX stuff, normal micro ATX stuff fits in here exactly as you'd expect. All they've done in reality is they've tweaked the design a little bit, but they've added the pass-throughs. So if you do want to use the Project Zero stuff or if you want to use the ASUS BTF or whatever ASUS and Gigabyte decide to call their technology when it arrives and, and potentially Biostar as well if they get in on the act and Teo and any other brands that are about at the moment, if they do decide to do it, then there's a strong chance it is going to be a very similar design. Generally, I think they are starting to come to the consensus that the manufacturers are going to be doing the same. I have actually got coming shortly, I think it's going to be towards the end of this week, I've actually got the MicroStar, or MSI, their new ATX version of the Project Zero board for AMD processors, which uh, is brand spanking new on the market. Not seen it anywhere at all yet, so it's going to be really interesting to see. Apparently, they have worked in conjunction with Thermaltake, and Thermaltake have been working with ASUS and MSI and other manufacturers on the design of this, so that it's got as much compatibility as you can possibly get at the current time in the market. So, many years from now, design layout may have changed, um, if it's anything like ATX, it probably won't, because ATX has been around for, what, 25 years now? So it's a pretty pretty strong bet. Actually, ATX has been around longer than that. I think it's 30 years almost. But yeah. Essentially, if you buy this case, there's a very, very good chance that your favourite manufacturers and motherboards, MSI, ASUS, etc., are going to have a compatible board, be it front-facing wiring or be it rear-facing wiring. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to put this board on its side now, and we'll get the overhead camera going in. Board. We'll put. Oh, I did. I said that when I was doing the review, didn't I? Sometimes I just get my words mixed up. So let's. Um, Matthew Day wants to know where does he put his DVD writer in it? You don't put your DVD writer in it. Slot there, isn't it? Gosh darn it! DVD writer should be in a USB enclosure somewhere, out of eyesight. <laughs> USBs. Matthew Day, what am going to do with you? I know there are a couple of you that still do the whole DVD thing. I have got Microsoft Flight on DVD to be fair, but I do use a somewhat of a crack to get around that. Rick H loves their, this DVD writer. I'll piss off of your DVD writers. <laughs> I'm just jealous. Is it hot? Last man standing says, is it Lycra or Spandex? About the wrestling. Wrestling? A letter said. Oh. Um, blah, blah, blah. About some wrestling stuff. Last man standing says, reminds me of a 1970s VCR at the bottom. Oh, what, that scoop at the bottom, yeah. They're where, going on about the snow plow. Where you'd have out your flip out uh, channel adjustment knobs. Oh, yeah. And your, um, what was the other thing? Tracking control. For when you had the fuzzy lines and you could use the tracking to get rid of it. I never did any of that. I put that zip around and then bothered with that. Oh, that's great. Rick H says, Thermos, they got some really nice products coming out. They do. There's actually two cases on the way out, um, which I am very, very keen to get my hands on. There is the View uh, 270. Oh, sorry, the, the View 270 which 
um, is a kind of fish tank style case. But there's also an S270, which actually is um, almost, well, not retro because it's not old enough yet, but um, a traditional style case. But it looks really nice. Rick H. Yes, Rick H. Um, I will order a DVD writer off Amazon for you, Mike. I've actually got one here somewhere. Yeah, I have actually. There we go. It's on my uh, my tool shelf. So I have a uh, external USB 3 USB. I think that's just a DVD writer. No, that's a DVD reader and a CD writer. It's actually rubbish. I used it once and it almost died trying to install 10 DVDs for Microsoft Flight. Remember when everyone had Mary Burning Rom on the PC? Oh, God. I could do that with my eyes shut at one stage. Kath, we didn't burn DVDs or CDs. You're imagining it. <laughs> yeah. Kath didn't burn Xbox games or anything like that at all, ever. We didn't spend hours and hours trying to find a suitable light-on drive that had the right BIOS to do Xbox games. And a printer that did CDs. And a printer that printed on CDs. We never did any of that. Right, so when it comes to putting your motherboard in, it is exactly the same principle. So you just slot it in, get it kind of lined up on the rear I.O., which, sorry, I've got the... Uh, the cable for the fan in the way. So line that up. And there's little standoffs on the actual case itself to allow it to be installed a little bit easier. <clears throat> so it's all good. I'm not sure about where you are if you're in the UK or not, but let me, I'm just gonna open up the window, the studio window a minute. And see if you can hear what the wind is like. It's blowing a gale. Let's close that. <laughs> Did any? Could you hear that? That is a. Uh, it's not my setter. Last man standing says it's roasting in Aberdeen like 15C. Rickage is very soothing. Ugly Bob says it's blowing about 50 miles an hour up here in Newcastle today. It's been 16 degrees. Did he have a curry last night? Yeah. David's uh, 17.6 degrees. Do you know what it is here? What's it saying here? In the room here today at the moment is 22.2, which is actually a little bit on the warm side. But we did have a fire going earlier. I'm in trouble with getting my screw in there. There we go. It's windy and Lee, says Anthony Carter. Storm Kathleen. It is. Oh, I've said it now. The trouble is, whenever I hear the Kathleen, uh, it's, it's Jolene, isn't it? Kathleen, Kathleen, Kathleen. And then we've got Soreen. And then we've bought some Soreen. As a dessert. So we sing it to So we sing that when that comes out. <laughs> Is that the wrong size thread? Mike is having trouble screwing today. Is alcohol involved? <laughs> he should have bought that last poke at the co-op. The trouble is I'm trying to actually get, um, not get my head in the way of the camera. So I'm kind of this bar here, which hopefully you lot can see my head is on the other side of that, so I can't actually see these posts at the bottom at all. Ugly Bob said last night he had the dirtiest kebab I've ever had. It's so greasy. Oh, grease is good. Greasy, mmm. I was saying to Mike earlier how I used to put butter on my chips at harvesters so it'd melt on them. <laughs> Gotta have a bit of butter on your chips. Ah! I'd have them unwrapped, ready to get straight on there before they got too cold to melt the butter. Uh, James Miscellaneous, while you're in the chat, I did notice you there. Uh, James is just released in a sort of, um, I guess it's like a beta format, maybe. 
Where's your head torch? Says Rick H. Good point. He had it on last night looking for cats. I think I've flattened the battery because I was out looking for cats in the back garden last night. And it's actually very handy for that because it's got a considerable range. And it scares them back into the house. Yeah. <laughs> it does scare them back in the house seeing like this alien okay. in the garden. How do you want to sing Elvis? Mm -hmm. In the garden. Oh, my head's in the shot. Hello, my head. Sorry, got my girt melon in the way. Right, so that is the motherboard installed. So, at this point now, if you want to, you can put the graphics card in and do all that stuff. But we're not going to do that at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. Use your brain mic, spin the case 90 degrees, and you'll be able to see better. Use my brain. Okay. Thanks, Deathstroke. There we go. So now can you get an idea of where this all goes and what goes where? So the pass-through connectors. Interrupt. James Miscellaneous. Hello. Files I gave you to run and operate correctly. Please give them a try in the form we discussed. Will do. Yeah, James has been working on his uh, one of his projects. And uh, <coughs> finally it's come to the end of that road where the project is done. About 10. Yeah, we've got loads of outdoor floodlights. Not very good though. So with this, obviously, you can kind of start wherever you want to. So let's say, for instance, this one here, this is our front panel I.O. So normally you'd be kind of fishing around trying to work out where this goes. But, um, well, you don't really need to do that anymore because you just go, pop, and that is it. There's your front panel I.O. done. That's how quick it can be. Next up, we've got our USB along here. So maybe you want to put in our uh, USB front panel connector. Maybe you do, I don't know, maybe you don't. So depending on how you want to do that. In terms of cabling, wherever you want it to flip round, the choice is yours. So very nice and easy, you've got full access to it. It's extremely simple. Our audio panel over here, done. Very straightforward. USB type C, not a problem. Although the thermal tape tie wrap is in the way. But USB type C, bosh, done. And when you're done, just undo the tie wrap. This one is actually a little bit awkward because it does fall in a slightly awkward place. But it's not a problem. There you go, tie it down. And effectively you're done. You can just cable manage that down a bit. Really, Zip tight. A nice case for sure, lots of options, I like it. So there we go, there is our cable management basically done. You tap that in, put in your power supply, and you're kind of good to go. That is your front panel connections all done. And let's take a look at the inside now. And look, absolutely nothing there. You can see there is not a wire in sight absolutely clean and the fact that they've done the uh the white color coded uh batteries run out on my head torch sorry about that oh god blinded myself um clean air. There we go. so there we go that is that's essentially what your motherboard is going to look like and your pc is going to look like how easy is that so let's go ahead now and we'll put the graphics card in because Boring, no cables. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Why Ali? <laughs> no cables. I give you oh now I've looked into the light, I can't see. I like it, it looks much easier to do. Yeah, like uh, doing front panel connections if you're on camera is an absolute right royal pain in the shitter. Oh, no, there's no other Oh, hello, puppy. There's no other words for it. It's just hell. It's an absolute hellish job to do. I always hate doing it on streams because you can never see exactly what's going on. You're fiddling around down in here somewhere. It's just an absolute ball ache. It really is. This is ridiculously, yeah. Fiddling around down there is making my, old, my balls ache. 
I don't know what, I just say it sometimes, it just comes out. Right, I'm going to try not to drop this graphics card. Please don't drop. Please don't drop, please don't drop. Now this is going to be very, very cool. I'm just going to leave that there. That's probably not a good idea, to be fair. So we're going to have to remove a couple of these rear I.O. slots. All of the rear I.O. slots as well, colour-coded in white, which is nice. Lucky Man says, Shane, no fan cables. Um, you can, There is a, a fan header on the front if you want to fire one in there, but much easier to take it out through the top. So the PCR Express latch is actually spring-loaded, but in the opposite direction. So it's permanently in open position. And because now we know that our PCI Express graphics card power is coming from these slots, which matches up there, this is so easy. Even with this monstrous graphics card, all we need to do is to line that up, he says, and that's it. The graphics card is installed and the power is attached. That is all we needed to do. How cool is that? And the fact that it physically fits as well. So I'm going to just put a couple of screws in there to hold it so we can flip it over. Now that is the thing. If you're going with the BTF setup, especially on the BTF boards and BTF uh, graphics cards, vertical mounting at present is out of the question because of where that connection is for the graphics card the power thing. so the power thing this is the default layout and the the basically the only layout so our graphics card is installed and now if we want to we can put in the power supply and let's hook up the stuff so power supply wise because this is just using normal uh, there is a GPU support in the box for the graphics card. They don't... Asus did... Well, Asus via Thermaltake. So Thermaltake effectively have uh, provided the parts for us, but Asus have supplied the majority of it. So we're going to go with the power supply, going with the Thermaltake <coughs> Tough Power GFA3 Snow 1050 watts. This is actually my power supply. And actually has been in use in various situations. So what are we going to need? Well, we don't need a PCI Express for sure. Normally put in the CPU before making the motherboard as usual, I imagine. Yeah, you put the, the CPU in basically whenever you want to. It's, it's kind of up to you. It's, uh, it's your build. Do it your way. If you want to do it at the beginning or the end, or if you haven't got your graphics card, or if you haven't got your... Um, your CPU, you can just carry and get it all built up. So we won't. You have to send them back. Um, I honestly won't miss it. Genuinely won't miss it. It's it's very expensive and it's very nice, but when when you know that something isn't actually yours, it's kind of like well, you've got to take ultra good care of it. You've got to be super careful and all that kind of stuff. And it's actually more of a a kind of a bit of a pain to be honest with you i know that sounds absolutely terrible and disrespectful but it is it's just an, another responsibility it's like having another cat but far more expensive and other people are well, and i'm more likely to break it than i am a cat i might lose a cat but i won't break one Sorry, I'm just uh, wiring up this power supply off camera. Mike, are you trying to get me to plan out my work pay for the next 12 months? <laughs> future, which is this video? Now, that must be a rally. It is. How would I guess that? It wasn't even written in AI. It wasn't even written in AI code. And I still figured it. No speech, things or arrows. <laughs> uh, Italics. 
So we're going to plug in everything we need there. So there is our power supply. We're all wired up. So let's slam dunk this in here. Now, if for some reason you're thinking, well, actually, that's a bit tight in there. Well, just move it. You don't have to worry about wiring it through or passing it through underneath the power supply because oh, that bit isn't there. Cheers, James. Which James? James Miscellaneous? Yeah. I'll be back. Gotta go. No worries, buddy. Where's the other James? James. Oh, the other James hasn't been about. He did message or leave him post on a video the other day saying about he reckon actually funny enough it was a thermal take power supply the bm3 he said that he just recommended one of his friend's sons get one for his new build um i want one of those question dutch jam can you already get a btf psu with shorter cables uh no not that i'm aware of possibly or it might become an option at some point i think at the moment because this is like very new technology i think a lot of that stuff will come but i think it's going to be a little bit of a wait if i bought an rtx 4090 will i have to buy a new psu or can i use my old psu uh depends what psu it is what size yeah what what size what model i wouldn't want to use a 4090 without using a um an atx 3.0 power supply Why down. What on the power supply? Because yeah. uh, it's the right way round on the other side. So if I mounted it fan side up, it would be correct. Actually, which side did I do it? Where is the fan? Uh, there it is, yeah. I was just checking my own stuff there. Putting the power supply in on the side is probably not the best idea I've ever had. 4090 advice, what? Yeah, I would say, well, because the um, the 4090 has, well, potentially can have transient spikes, which it far it exceed its what is rating. Is it about connectors more so? Um, it's, it is connectors for like 4000 series graphics cards in general are going to want a uh, 12 volt high power connector, which is that one there. But can you convert? They can. You, most graphics cards, in fact, even this one comes with an adapter in the box. Actually, did it come? No, it didn't come with an adapter in the box. That was my MSI one. Anyway, right. Let's wire up some of the things. So this is very straightforward and very easy to do. So motherboard main power. Done. EPS 12 volts at the top for our CPU. One, two, those are done. Tuck those out of the way. Now obviously with this, you can go completely to town and do whatever you want with this, but it's actually not really that necessary. So, um, oh, we're kind of done. That's it, we're, we're finished really. So all we need to do is to give the graphics card some power, the 12 volt high power, and that is effectively it. So at this point, you think to yourself, well, happy days, my work here is done. And screws don't line up very well. And they do. It is literally just there. The hydronaut is on top of my camera bag because it's one of the next things I'm going to be using. Thank you for the hydronaut. And actually, thanks to Ugly Bob as well for sending uh, the some fans, which actually I'll quickly show because they are going to be a very nice contrast on the screen. So you may have seen the video we did recently on these fans or similar fans from Sahara, the M12W. These are basically the same thing, but a little bit cheaper. William Booty asked, did you put in a CPU? I haven't put a CPU in as of yet. Uh, that is something which I'm still waiting for. But there we go. So that is effectively, other than our processor and a cooler, and obviously RAM, 
That's our PC built and wired. That is ready. Um, this is you. And this is me. Like I've managed. What time is it? It's only half past nine. And when did I start? I didn't even start it. You were late. I started this very late. But that is effectively done. For you. You'd still be doing the bloody spring clips on. Yeah. Got another one. Kieran actually made me aware of these, so sent those in. Thank you for that. Where's the RAM like? Well, the RAM actually at the moment is currently, well, it's there, but empty box, because that's actually in the streaming PC. So that is a bit of a, a faux pas. I was meant to swap out the RAM before I started streaming, but I haven't. So I've, uh, I've kind of stuffed myself there. So let's go back to the main camera. Put in a cheap seller on <laughs> I don't have a cheap seller on CPU, unfortunately. So, there we go, that is it. It's Firewolf one, missed the days when building a PC took a blood ritual. Yeah, we didn't lose any, uh, didn't lose any body parts here. So that is effectively it. Like if you had a... a that Project Zero, no CPU. Project Zero, yeah, zero, zero FPS, because there's no graphics card in there. Uh, there's no uh, CPU in there. But yeah, that is effectively it. I have, got, actually, I have got a CPU. But then I don't really have a cooler or DDR RAM. But do I, don't I? What with that graphics card, anything you thought would it work? Yeah, I'm thinking what I've got. Let me have a look. Let me see if we can get this thing fired up, because it would look nice. Although I'm not sure if I actually want to fire it up, because I'm not sure what the drive in there is and what's actually on it. <laughs> so it could be... Uh, it could be. If this if this is a, a drive which is full of games and or benchmark results, that'd be fantastic. That'd make my life a lot easier. Right, I'm going to wire up the fans on the back. Now, actually, one thing I will say, which is a slightly negative thing, and yes, I will say it. I'm not going to be a, a sellout and praise where I think there is a potential issue. My only thing is for me personally when i'm wiring stuff up i'll open the front panel and i'd be play, playing around and plugging stuff in whereas with this i would have to take the back of the pc off and possibly the front as well so it just means there's an extra couple of steps involved when i'm doing kind of anything but um how fast it is for actually wiring up in the back is just uh, bananas like when have you ever seen me build a PC, or the majority of a PC, that quickly? Uh, where are we going? Chassis. I don't think there was an F bomb or anything. Yeah, I didn't say Foxtrot anything. Uh, where do we want? There's another fan header. So I'm just gonna pass that one through. But yeah, it's a it's a pretty cool, pretty cool experience. And I was somewhat against it, like I said before. Oh, typical. That cable is just slightly too short. There is actually an adapter in the pack for the uh, thermal tape fans to make the cables a little longer. Could have used the case with two glass panels. Uh, well, I have actually got a case with two glass panels, but I think even with how easy this is, the uh, the Land Cool 3 would have posed some problems because that isn't the easiest of cases in the world to deal with when it comes for uh, building stuff. Um, um, Nick Barnes, I can't read it till, the car, till it goes up. Uh, Nick Barnes, surely you would have both panels off Intel build compute? Yes, yeah, you would. I'm, I'm talking like if I was like the PC behind me. If I ever need to do anything, I can just open the side, boom, put a fan in, put some RAM in, uh, change fan configuration, plug in USB headers, plug in fans, move, plug in an RGB cable. It's all there ready for me on this side. Whereas with this, because all that's been moved to the back, I would have to kind of open the front, make Y changes in here, then turn the PC around to gain access to the back. It's a very, very minor thing. And I'm thinking of it more from my point of view, 
Like for most people, you just build your PC, you turn it on and you just look at it for the next seven years or whatever it's gonna be. But I do tinker with my PC like daily. So this setup for me as a daily driver would probably be quite, um, well, it would be great because it's a 4090, but it would be slightly limiting in fact, because I would have to keep on taking the side panels off, which would be a little bit annoying. I would live with it, don't get me wrong. So if for some reason on the 8th, after the eclipse, the system goes down, the grid goes down, and Asus don't remember who's got this stuff, then happy days. I, I, I would use it. You mentioned earlier a new MSI <coughs> ATX Project Zero motherboard. Is that AMD or Intel? AMD. Yeah, I'm not sure what model it is. Um, I haven't been told. As far as I know, it's just MSI ATX Project Zero AM5. Chipset wise, no idea. Could be a B550, could be uh, an X670, uh, 670, 670E, B650E. I have no idea what it is yet. So until it actually arrives, I don't know if it's even actually being announced. I've got a sneaking suspicion it might be under embargo still, but I don't know. I've not seen it announced on MSI's website, which normally they do tend to announce those things or coming soon and I've not seen anything and I've not seen any reviews either yeah so I w I would be quite interested to see what that is like I really would last month standing I just bought an Asrock 7900 GRE steel series good choice I think in hindsight now I wish I'd have waited a little bit when I bought my 7800 XT that has been my one of my regretful purchases well, I've got some DDR RAM here. Right. Which Second, William Bowden said in some streams the YouTuber removed the part. Why not here? So maybe we need to look into getting rid of that. Um, Nonsense. I don't know if I can actually. Let's have a look. Well, we can look into it in another. Not in the middle field. Oh, actually, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is a a setting you can do. Where are we? Top chat. Yeah, saying that now, I'm pretty sure I do remember seeing some option for that. Anyway, we'll have a look. Make a video on that. So I've got some RAM here. This is just like gen generic crappy RAM, but I'll stick it in and uh, we'll get a processor in. We'll get it lit up at least. Rick's got his Arctic Freezer 36 that you recommended. That'll be going on his i7 12700K. Ooh, that sounded unpleasant. Nice one, Rick. Now that looks stealthy. Um, what do I use as a cooler? What is going to be the best bang for buck? Like that 44p ice cream we just bought. <laughs> yeah. It's not a bad idea. Right, I've got something which I'm not supposed to be showing yet, but... Shut your eyes, shut, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> if everyone just closes their eyes for five minutes, I think we'll be all right. Just don't tell anybody. Got any bent pins? Not yet. Still working on it. Oh my God, this makes my ass cringe. They like pockers. <laughs> right, so this processor is a 14700K. And that appears to be in. Let's make sure it's seated nicely. Oh yeah, I'm on that. Sorry, I forgot I was on that. Uh, over her camera, there we go. So we've got a 14700K in there. Uh, when it comes to CPU coolers, I have got one here, which I am supposed to be reviewing, but I'm not too sure if it is under embargo or not. I just dropped things. So let's have a look.
So we have here the uh, Thermaltake 280 EX Pro ARGB. Oh, I'm on the wrong bloody camera now. <laughs> oh dear. Main camera, there we go. So Thermaltake 280 EX Pro ARGB sync, which I'm, I'm not sure if I'm even supposed to be showing you. So pretend you haven't seen it. And if anybody asks, well, you didn't see it here. I don't even know if I've even opened this yet. No, I haven't. So let me grab a knife or some scissors. And we will carefully open this. And then that way, when I put it all back together and do an unboxing, you can pretend that you've never seen it before. So this is using their next generation of magnetic connections on the fans. 140 mil. So these are the EX Pros. Very, very nice. And of course we've got two of those and Obviously, they are going to be magnetic. <laughs> the magnet is not that strong. These are heavy fans. So, there you go. That's what they are like. Got a bunch of fittings here, which is always nice. And 280mm rad. Let's go to the overhead. Again, just pretend that you've not seen any of this. I've not seen it, so um, let's have a look. Instel, Intel installation guide, LGA 1700. We've got some sticky bits to go on the back. Don't like those. Sorry, I did say that out loud then, didn't I? So you have to bear with me. If you want to see this thing fired up, this is the pain you have to go through. You have to go through pain with me. Uh, which one's LG seventeen hundred? That one. Um, I honestly don't know. I genuinely don't know. I don't think so. so LG seventeen hundred. Lucky Mountain says on sale thermal take, so no. Oh, what is saying it's on sale? Mm. Excellent. In that case, we'll just pretend everything is normal. So this goes on the back here, like so. And we've still got nice, easy access. And we've got some thumb screws. You won't be able to see this. So. Uh, last man standing says, I'm rocking a 2600K. That 14700K is going to be my next upgrade. I think the 14700K is probably the best bang for buck. Because the 14900K is just ridiculous. And the 14700K is going to be absolutely fine for, I'm guessing, probably 99.9% .9 of people. Unless you have a very, very specific reason to need those extra cores which most people won't, let's be honest. Okay. So this, actually, this um, CPU cooler is the perfect, uh, the perfect partner for this particular setup because this case is suited for a 280mm top mounted radiator. And the 280mm radiator actually still has a, a really, really good amount of uh, capacity to it. So I'm just gonna have to work out where this is gonna go. So talk amongst yourselves a minute. Rick saving up. Sorry, Rick saving up for the Tower 300 in turquoise. Tower 300, that's a good choice. Tower 300 is pretty awesome.
Sound Blaster. Yeah, that's a person. Oh, hello. Hello, Sound Blaster. Right, that's going to go that way, so that way. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm just trying to organise where my cables are going to go. So it doesn't really matter with this because they're magnetic anyway, so if it's not in the right place, then I'll just move the magnet. Uh, Sound Blaster. Got a 10600K on 5.1 megahertz. What's the best card for this CPU? Um, to be honest with you, it depends what it is you want to do. People ask this a lot, like what's the best card for this? It isn't really a case of what is the best because it's more a case of what games you actually play. But if you play games which aren't CPU bound, then it doesn't really make a massive amount of difference. But if you're playing games which are CPU bound, or you're playing at um, really, really high refresh rates for competitiveness, then you ideally you want a processor, or, or a graphics card rather, which is not going to cause you any lag or latency. So you want something with a, a very fast memory, and uh, preferably a fast GPU as well. But again, this is also like, what is your budget? How much money have you actually got? It's pointless me saying, well, you want to get a 4070 Super or a 7800 XT or 7900 GRE if you don't have the money for that. But the, uh, the 10600K is still a pretty decent processor. You should be able to pair that with pretty much most graphics cards. Um, ah, I was looking for my screwdriver, the one I dropped. Uh, 10600 is a, a tenth gen, or uh, PCI Express Gen 4, it'll do. I think ninth gen was the last of the um, PCI Express Gen 3. Well, actually, I might be wrong there. It's been a while since I've looked at one of those. I'd probably have to look it up to be absolutely 100%. Uses a 1080p monitor. That's helpful. So 1080p is going to be your limitation. So yeah, you want something which 1080p is going to bottleneck your processor pretty hard if you've got a fast graphics card because your CPU is going to be struggling to generate enough frames unless you're like 1080p and you go for ultra settings. So that is going to give the GPU a little bit more of a load rather than the CPU. Although saying that, the CPU is going to get somewhat of a load as well. It's a, it's a, difficult, it's a difficult thing to recommend straight off the bat, to be honest with you. Right, let's go to the overhead and we're going to stick the radiator in now. I suppose really I should have put these wires through. Uh, Montec King at the moment is kind of quite far down the list of things to look at, to be honest with you. Still Montec, I don't know what it is, their, their rep got in contact with us, but they seem to keep on changing reps. And the last one I spoke to, they're like, oh yeah, no problem, we'll get that sent out for you. And then nothing, like radio silence. So I don't really... I don't really know. I don't really want to go and buy one because actually I don't really like the look of it if I'm honest with you. I don't like that rounded fish tank look. But I do appreciate that people do like it so if I can get one sent to me for a review maybe it'll change my mind but I wouldn't spend my own money on it I don't think. Well I know I wouldn't. In fact I was looking at it today because it was on Gamers Nexus and that's one of their cases that they were sort of um, sponsored by or whatever. AC1, do you not find it hard building a PC with a left-handed screwdriver? Yeah, it's absolute hell. But luckily the, uh, the super chats and comments get me through it. <laughs> cool. I'll tell you what, this PC is getting heavy now. Actually, let's move that there so you can see a bit better. Mm. What you think of the 
Diaz. Gam Diaz? Yeah, Neso P1, please. No idea. Gam Diaz is basically not really a thing in the UK. So we don't really get to see it. You get them every now and then when the shipping is favourable. But Gam Diaz themselves, I don't think they have a UK outlet. I'm pretty sure they don't. Uh, means your graphics card's not working, or not getting power, Discord. or you haven't got a monitor plugged into it. Discord is your best bet, I guess, but um, yeah, there's a lot of fault finding you can do for yourself. Just make sure your graphics card is actually powered. You've got the power cords in correctly, the GPU is fully inserted, and also your monitor is plugged in all the way, and the plastic shielding around your HDMI or DisplayPort cables isn't being obstructed by anything because that will uh, pretty much immediately stop your graphics card from working as it should do. Things are getting a little bit tight in here now. So I'm pretty sure we have to use this one and that is gonna go on that side. We'll peel that Plus off. He what? Plus the latest graphic card driver software. Uh, yeah. The but really, that's a hardware problem. So it's probably not getting as far as the software. Right, did a little line of thermal pasta. Just gonna use some uh, thermal right TF7 on there. I'm gonna be taking this apart, so don't want to use anything on there which is uh, particularly nice. Oh, it's like a toy. Toy. Look at toy. Oh. Like I should have opened that first. This is all going horribly wrong. Toy. Look at toy. Magnetism's gone. I've lost my magnetise. Oh, like <laughs> Smoking a pancake. I'm not sure if that's the right way to do this, but it seems to work. Do you want that? Bottle opener brought back in. <laughs> yeah. Now you should really do this with uh, alternating screws, but I'm not particularly bothered. This is not we're not going into um, benchmark mode. I'm just gonna get this installed and see if we can get it to post. This does look nice, actually. I like the bend of the cables there, or the pipes, but they're just a little bit proud. They'll settle in time. I have to coax them around a little bit. And we're gonna send, this is the only thing which is a little bit of a pain in the, uh, the proverbial, because you've got these extra, actually Kath, can you put that little light on above you, please? Not I'm not sure if it's gonna help or not. Yeah, I think that did help a bit. Did that help a bit? Maybe it did. So anyway, we've got these wires. They're kind of the only wires we're really seeking to see. Uh, R Portier, are you really using a card worth over 3,000 euros? I have no idea how much it costs in euros, to be honest with you. But it's not ours. It's not mine. It's uh, It's been loaned to us by our good friends at Thermaltake. Well, Asus and Thermaltake. Wouldn't it be better to have the 
light magnetic one inside the case. Yeah, it actually would. But I'm actually, I think I'm pretty much done here anyway. So I'm gonna flip this. <coughs> Jeez, this thing's got, this thing's gotten really heavy. And I'm gonna leave it on there for a minute. So that is the pump. This isn't gonna be particularly pretty to begin with because um, I've gotta find out where the wires go. Actually, I should show you this on the camera, isn't I, the main camera. So this is the one for the pump, I believe. Yes, the pump. So normally, like, if you'd installed your graphics card or installed all your stuff, you'd be like, oh, I can't get to this shit up the top. It's completely out of reach. So, oh, that one says AIO pump. There we go, we're done. That in itself is probably worth a couple of thousand pounds. <laughs> it's not, it's not a joke. Uh, and our CPU header, CPU optional. Oh, let's, uh, let's plug that in there. So there we go. There's our RGB plugged in, almost all of our RGB our AIO and that, and it's all there. And the good thing is as well, it's actually pretty easy to access should you need to access anything. Because like, I'm feeding the wires up from inside, behind a 280 mil rad, which isn't particularly small, he says, fighting with the RGB cable. Come on, you little swine. There we go. Oh, what's that one stuck on? There we go. So with the RGB, do have a little bit of length on that one, so let's disconnect that. Now, like I said, this is like cable management. Once it's all done and it's working, you can work on your cable management if you want to, or you can just be an absolute heathen and leave it exactly as it is. Like he did in George's case. Like, like I did in George's well, last week, yeah. Revealed it last week. So that effectively is la la la, I can't see any of that, it's absolutely fine. But look at this side what let's play oh bollocks i was gonna say let's play spot the cable but those are in the way so ignore me on that one so, professional breather says what a great job hi mike do you hi. think that a card such as rx 5600 xt is still good for a 1080p in 2024 which card rx 5600 XT. Yeah. Wait, and for how much longer do you think this level of card is sufficient? Um, well, it's only it's only as sufficient as the games that you play on it. If you're playing relatively modest games with modest game engines, then it's going to last for like ever. But if you're playing games which need a little bit more horsepower, then that is going to be the deciding factor. It's never it's never the graphics card really until they stop making drivers. Right. Uh, That's a good point from Old Man Withers. Better for you to read it, I think. Oh, my computer's turned off. <laughs> Old Man Withers? I can't see it yet. Oh. Uh, where's my mouse gone? Ah, there we go. Set that on the screen. So, uh, where is he? I'm not sure I like it. All right, that's fair enough. Do you want me to read it all? Yeah, old man, I'm sorry. oh yeah, old man withers, got you. Uh, I'm not sure I like it, it looks clean. Where is the satisfaction and pride in making a tidy system? What's to show off? Well, you can still do all that stuff. It's just, it makes it easier for you. Yeah, carry on. I can't see the rest. What's to show off if any old mucker can do it? Might as well have 2000 old beige enclosed. <laughs> well, so, I guess. There, yeah, there is a good point. Like, this isn't taking the skill or the craftsmanship out of building a PC. You're still having to do it to some extent. There's still things you've got to think about. You've got cable management in the back still to do. That is a concern, whether your parts are going to work together, whether it all fits in, is the cooling going to be sufficient? So it's, you've still got the same sort of things. You've still got some things to consider and to do. It's just making it so that this side, which we normally see, just looks very clean and very crisp and very uncluttered, which is the side that you're most likely to see. Now, I wouldn't say this was an absolute piece of piss to make, 
it's still got its own challenges, but it's just moved the challenges to another position. Uh, we'll turn the lights off, mate, because I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is actually, we do actually have power going through. Oh, Christ. I go so, the standby light, you've got the ROG screen there, which is a full digital screen, which you'd probably expect for this sort of money. Actually, let's do the, uh, the peel. Get rid of that. And uh, I suppose really that the only thing that leaves us to do is to press the power button. Now, it won't boot up because I don't have a keyboard and mouse plugged in or a monitor for that matter. Um, maybe I should. Maybe I should. Light on? Um, yeah, go on. I'll plug in the Wimax it. Wimax it, Babs. don't do it when you want. No, let's not do that. <laughs> I wonder what our neighbours think of doing that sort of stuff all day long. Yeah, I think that's why Kath don't want the window open. She, she didn't care about the fact that it's it's warm or cold. She just don't want the neighbours hearing me talking like some kind of lunatic. All day, every day. Hey, <laughs> that's unkind. But we do, don't we? We're always. We are. we are to be fair right now does the uh the 4090 actually have an hdmi i'm guessing it would do mike sing along and unboxing yeah right let me know in the chat quick um quick thing in the chat let me know do you want to see the boot screen or do you want to see the computer illumination because i can't really show you both at the same time so it's going to be a one or the other kind of deal so can't you push the pc across that way and put the monitor next to it um I'm, i actually yeah i probably, probably could, do. could fit it in there i can't see a thing because you aren't dealing with the super chat thank you for the super chat whoever <laughs> you read it you can have the light on uh our <laughs> Lucky man, two dollars or two pounds. Sorry, Asus RTX ROG Strix forty ninety BTF edition. Two thousand, uh, two pounds eighty. What? I don't. <laughs> I didn't read it. Sorry, can't help. Two thousand eight hundred ninety four three quid. Is it two and a half grand? Is that what you're saying? No, I don't care. Not mine. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay that money for it. <laughs> I really wouldn't. Although, Thermal Take have never paid me for a review, ever. Mind you, none of the companies have. So, if they want to start, uh, this is a good way. This this could work for me. But I don't think we'd do that. Uh, let's move that over there. So, right, can you see the PC? What's the price of that screen? Oh, I can't move the bloody screen now. Uh, flame, don't sell my keyboard, mate. Oh, that. I know. That ain't long enough. That's what she said. Oh, actually, what's the shortest bit there? If I can plug that into the front, I'm not sure if that's going to get enough power. Yeah. There we go. There's no panic. Right, um, let's see. Is that visible? Yes, it is. Let's uh, turn it on. Let's see if it actually boots. I've done basically nothing to it. What's the price of that screen? Um, I'm not too sure. Bob sent this in, I think. Didn't he max it? No, they sent that, didn't they? I think it was about uh, 80 or 90 quid. There's a review on it. Man, is it going to boot? I've got a black screen at the moment. It's turned itself off. It's actually properly turned Bang. itself off and then turned itself back on. Come on, give me a, give me a screen. Give me a give me an update screen. Oh, the Thermaltake logo is 
bit pissed. There we go. Uh, is it still RAM training? Memory training. Uh, it's doing something. It's got an LED counter thing at the top there, so you can see what it's doing. Do about thinking about it. Hey, look at that. We got a post. Republic of Gamers, delete or F2 to enter the boss settings, and yada, 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 etc., etc. So 32 gigs of RAM, 14700K. Please enter, blah, 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 F1 to continue. No keyboard detected, because <laughs> we don't have a keyboard plugged in. And um, we're currently A2, and... That GPU is bigger than a lot of laptops will. It looks <laughs> it's all right. Why it's not my thing, though. I, uh, I, I like it. I think it's all right. I'm not sure, again, like you guys are saying, whether or not it would be my preference. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's actually quite a nice contrast, though. The case with the graphics card, and it fits in there quite nice. And the RGB actually... I know, I was thinking the RGB actually is shining off the end, but there's not. There's an RGB ring on the end of the graphics card. Oh my god, this. Let's, uh, let's give you a closer look. And if you weren't expecting that camera position move, I do apologise. So there we go. I do like the minimalist cabling. That is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Nothing a bit of black tape when it's sorted out on that graphics card. Not, yeah, a little bit, of, little bit of gaffer tape on there and it will be looking as, uh, as good as new. <laughs> Car. Well, it works. Um, I can't press F1 though, because I don't have... Actually... If um, yeah, you can though. No reason why not. I would probably turn the fan around. Turn the fan around. Well, I'm going to set up the bar for a minute, very, very quickly. It'll have to be quickly because I. Uh... Oh, actually, I'll just leave this set to auto. Extreme tweaker. I like how they call it extreme tweaker now, rather than just being. AI tweaker, it's extremely. GPU combo do look nice. Yeah, I think to be fair, it does. Where did you even turn on XMP? Is that white cooler okay, runs a bit strangely. This one? Yeah, it's just really slow. That's fresh. I can't find XMP. You'd think that would be an easy thing to work out. Uh, let's just do auto. Uh, XMP. Yeah, that back fan, I think. Well, all I'm going to do is turn on XMP and save changes and reset. And we'll just see if anything comes up on the screen. I really want to see what the temperature is of the of the uh, the CPU. Yes, that little clock, or the uh, the seven digit uh, display, should in theory show the temperature of the CPU. Or it might even say it actually on the uh, the ROG side panel there, which actually is quite cool. I actually might have to get one. I don't think I will. It keeps on saying 99 and 98, and that's worrying me like it's overheating. Right, it's gone into La BIOS. So it doesn't appear to be detecting that drive, whatever's on there. Let's see if it sees it. Uh, where are you, boot? CSM's off. Boot configuration. Where is the 
thing. I cannot find my way around here. Kids monitor and files for temps. Yeah, good idea. Oh my goodness. Right. Um, I'm going to have to get the camera around onto that. Right, be careful if you suffer from any kind of vertigo or seasickness. Well, you're probably not going to be able to see that still. Uh, is that visible? Let me see if I can read that on the screen myself. Yeah, so CPU temperature is currently at 34 degrees Celsius. CPU package at 45. Motherboard temperature at 24. VRMs at 37. Chips at temperature 37. And the dims are at 27 also. I could hear my voice then, coming back on me in somewhere. Or was that just echoing in the wall? Getting tinnitus, I swear. So there are temperatures, 35 degrees C at idle with no power management. I think that's not bad at all. Uh, where is the drives? Ah, don't want that. Uh, is it displaying the temps in F? Uh, no, they're Celsius. What is setup animator? I don't think I want to know that. Anyway, it's working. I can't find the setting for the drive. And obviously there's nothing on there because obviously it would try and boot from it. Cheryl says I saw the temps in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Uh, let's have a look. I might have had Fahrenheit on the side. Where was it? Temperature monitor. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, it's yeah, Fahrenheit. I completely like Yeah, ignored that. <laughs> so yeah, five point five gigahertz frequency. 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what it's displaying 99 then? Yeah, might be. Or it might be part of the, the boot cycle. So it's like, that's just a code for something. Just a coincidence. It's a coincidence. But if it's American, it probably would be F, wouldn't it? Most stuff tends to be done in Celsius for some reason, for computer stuff. Very rare do you get Fahrenheit reported. Update drivers, I dare you. Update drivers? I can't update the drivers because it's not even got an operating system on it. Uh, let's see if it will actually Lucky try and... Update the BIOS. Didn't we update that one already? BIOS has already been updated. I did that uh, to start with because there's the new Intel CEP, which... Um, save. Oh. Save changes and reset. I've got the um, the Windows 11 boot disk in there, so I'll just see if it actually sees that drive. It might be a duff drive, or it might be I just didn't put it back in properly. Might be a duff beer. Duff beer. Mmm, duff beer. Mmm. I'm surprised how cool that CPU's running. It doesn't feel like there's any warmth in the tubes at all. I do like the idea of those fans. Are they actually, are they both spin in? Yeah, they are. Can't tell because it's so quiet. So let's uh, do our Windows setup. Install now. Oh. I don't have a product key. Windows 11 Professional. Yeah, whatever. Uh, install now. Don't have a product key. Windows 11 Pro, next. Yes, deja vu. Right, unallocated space, so yeah, it's a blank drive. 250 gigabytes? I didn't even look at the drive. Is, if anybody's watching the stream can use the DVR function and go back to the beginning 
and see what the um, see what the drive is. I'm sure it was bigger than that because Evo 970s are normally quite big drives. Maybe that's why they left it in there because it's only 256 gigs, which is a bit pointless these days. Happy for an operating system though, but not going to get many games on there. Flight Sim 2020 won't fit on there very well. Um, what was I doing? Calf's trying to get me shot. I'm trying to what? Get me shot. What's that? <laughs> Getting get bloody graphics card off the fact that. What's going on? Is it working? Oh, it says it's working. Oh well, it does appear to be working. You wouldn't tell because there's... Oh, something's ramped up a bit then. I think that's the fans. Yeah, that's the chassis fans. So, essentially... Essentially. That word essentially, we looked at it the other day in this... It kind of makes sense for what you're saying, but... I just hear it used too often. It kind of annoys me. But what we've got in this case now is all of the fan slots are filled with 140 mil fans. So we've got two 140 CT140s in the front, ARGB. We've got a single CT140 non-RGB in the back. And in the top we've got two um, Tough Fan EX140 Pros. I think that's what they're called. Yeah. EX Pro, very nice. Considering how small and compact this chassis is, the case, it actually seems to be doing a, a pretty good job. Consider that's a 4019, that's a big bloody graphics card. And the 14700K isn't a, uh, isn't like a little pissant processor. I'm quite impressed. I do like the Series 330. I would say if I had any criticism at all, well, there'd be two slight criticisms. The first one would be not being able to put a 360mm rad in the top without some serious modifications. And also, I think I would have liked to have seen this front panel section, rather than having that scoop, just have that flat all the way down. I think that would have just been a much nicer design. I know it gives a sense of shape and etc etc and I know exactly where they got the idea for that X it is on the uh, tough ram XG they use that X there on the top of the ram can't really see it particularly well there but that is that shape it's the same angles and everything so it seems they do try and put that kind of X thing in maybe it's just satanic I don't know maybe they're like X factor Who knows? But anyway, seems to be working. She's very pleasing. But I'm going to try and see if I can read your comments. I'm going to plug in the LAN cable as well. So, uh, Ugly Bob, I think, is, is that Ugly Bob? Has gifted some memberships? Yes. Oh, God, where's the mouse? Oh, the mouse is connected to there. I have to use this one. That's going to be fun. Uh, right, so Ugly Bob's gifted five Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How-To memberships. One of which has gone to Kiefer Mercer, Rumjack13, Peter S, Mr. JG84, and Atomic Sub. You lucky people have been gifted a membership by Ugly Bob. Thank you, Ugly Bob. Uh, last man standing in the UK says nobody love me. Should we give some? Sorry about that. Yeah, we, we can give some. You never know. William Bodie says, did you open up for it? That's kind of cute. There we go. Da, da, da. Uh, Viali says, got 10 one twenties in his. Uh, Lucky Man says, you only said... 940 Evo mic. Oh, yeah, sorry, 970 Evo it was. I 
Aletta says I have a 16 pound sledgehammer. I can make the front of that case flat for Mike. <laughs> uh, Atomic Sub says, totally forgot there was a stream tonight, to be honest. No worries. Thank you, Bob. Uh, James Missionary says, yes, yes, run JSM on this machine if it's off your network. False positive imminent now. Okay, I will see what I can do. I'll do, update the drivers and then I'll disconnect it from the network. So Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, that's us. Uh, gifted five memberships. So Jason Woods was gifted a membership. Uh, Toe Gunner. The Ordinary Dude. Uh, F.A., I can't pronounce the rest, and Iman Bukan. Enjoy your memberships. You now have access to videos a little bit earlier than the rest of the world. And you also get the chance to support the channel directly, should you wish to, when your membership expires. Good old YouTube. Uh, 970 does come in a 250 gig. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for the information, Eric. Now, actually, I don't need to actually connect this to the network. I'm thinking because... Sorry, how long was it on this? Why is it asking for Canadian multilingual stand standard? I don't want to... No. James asked, did you mandate the caps not to interfere with today's build? Yes. Your overlords are usually overseeing you. Most definitely. But they have a little box with a hole in the front that might cut, and they love it in there. So they're in there. Right, I'm having problems with the Ethernet again over in this corner. I wonder if I need to lick it. Come on, connect. I've been having problems with this wife, uh, the uh, the wired connection. Last couple of days, actually, there was I bought a new processor, a cheap processor from AliExpress. I was getting some weird disconnection errors, but I've had it now on another two computers. So I'm thinking that that wasn't a problem with the actual processor. It was more my cabling. I wonder if the cats have been pulling the cables out. Bear with. Why is it always them? Well, it wouldn't be me pulling the cables out. Well, it might be. Enjoy. <laughs> well, it appears that all the cables are connected, it would seem. Those, oh, God damn it. Chest cramp. Oh, pain. Let's connect me to the network. Now, this is the stupid thing, you can't get past this, can you, without... Um... Oh, I can't even remember what the command is now. Uh... It's not even seeing a network, right. No, I'm... it's not the Ethernet. You need to continue set up without Internet. You have to go command prompt and give a command. Yeah. Um, oh, I can't remember what the bloody command is now. Is it Control F4? Oh, F4. Control Alt F4. Is this keyboard actually working? Yeah. Oh, for God's sakes. But it should connect me to a network because it is plugged in. Shift F10. That sounds good. Yay. Right. What is the command I need to run? I need to look up my own video. Unless anybody else can tell me in the chat. Uh, where are we? Bypass. When you've got to look up your own videos for stuff, it's quite embarrassing. Bypass. 
Windows 11 network connection. There we go. Hey, and I'm the first one. Is it OB bypass? Yeah, I think it's the OBE and that. Right, uh, where are we? O O B E. Thank you for whoever looked up. Lots of people. <laughs> oh, why is my keyboard not working? Okay, keyboard's not working. I'm going to plug it into the back. I need to invest in a new wireless keyboard or seven. It must have worked because Shift F10 is bringing that up, but then it won't let me type anything. So what gives? That is bizarre. So does it stop you typing stuff now? Now lick the keyboard. <laughs> I can't. I need. I need to live a little longer. Uh, there is another thing in there you can do if it doesn't actually work in that respect. Look at that! Some kind individual actually sent us a fifty Canadian dollar super thanks for that video. That's very kind. Uh, da, da, da. No, I'm screwed, aren't I, really? Oh, come on. I don't understand how that works. So Shift F10 <laughs> works, and it brings up that window. But I can't actually do anything. Ah, it's because I wasn't the active window. The window's not selected. I know. Bypass. Oh, God, what was it? <laughs> O-O-B-E, out of box experience. I got it. Out, forward slash. Yeah, but it's capitalised letter, isn't it? I'm not sure which capitalises it is. I don't do this every day. Right, enter code. Oh, bypass NRO. Buy. Pass. NRO. Then enter. And then that out-of-box experience from Kelly. Ah, there we go. I, I only put one S in pass. I was, I was being a little bit too... Uh, a little bit too ungener... No, little... Oh, for God's sake, I'll just shut up. The brain's stopped functioning now. This is kind of it. Game over. Rick H says you need to set up a GoFundMe account to buy a larger house. Bigger brain. Yeah. <laughs> Brian. Need a bigger Brian. Yes, this is the right country still. This is the right keyboard layout. And I still don't want to add another one. I don't have interwebs. Continue with limited setup. Enter your name. Let's call myself a Zeus. Password is enter. Uh, required only. I'm going to rip my trousers in a minute. That's pants to you in America. You are. What, standing like that? Yeah. Well, I'm too tall for the desk, which is like a weird thing in itself, but I'm too short if I kneel down, so I've got to kind of stretch my legs out a little bit. I think I've just done myself an injury. Right, I'm only going to sit down here and keep myself out of trouble. Hi. Uh, any questions? Rookie error? I oh, know. Dominic, or sorry, Dom M. Hello all, late Jane, and there's little sounds, very loud. And the title sounds very loud. What have I missed? Not a lot. Who's that, sorry? O'Reilly says, Mike is acting like a teenage boy on his first date. Oh dear. What's that? 
Dom. Dom's there, is he? Yeah. I can't see that. Oh, yes, I can. Sorry, I have a surprise, Dom. Rick says he needs to set up a GoFundMe account to buy a larger house. We do, we do need a bigger house. Well, we don't need a bigger house, just need a bigger studio. That would be good. <laughs> Irie Wolfman says, I thought the user would have been TT. Yeah, good point, good, uh, good thing. Last Man Stand in UK. Mike, did you get that 4080 Super from Scan? No, I've sort of boycotted them a bit. And I bought the uh, 4070 Super instead from eBay via VIP Computers. Uh, VIP Computers, if you're not sure, um, VIP Computers in the UK are a distributor. So they sell basically most of the stuff that comes into the country in the big containers and then uh, ship it out to the smaller independent retailers. And sometimes thing, places like Scan, eBuyer, all that kind of stuff, although they generally tend to buy direct a lot of the time now. Okay. You have Ethernet now. I don't know. Um, VIP, are, yeah, they're a distributor. So if they get returns, they sell stuff off cheap on eBay, which is pretty good. Would you like to download Armory Crate? Well, I'd like to see. Right, trying to reconnect to the internet. Now, this is actually a very cool thing that Asus have sent with the motherboard, I think. God, this is absolute ludicrous. I'm not going to lose my temper. Well, I kind of might. There is in here somewhere. Oh, shit. Included. With the motherboard is an ROG driver disc, which will hopefully contain a installation setup, which would be nice. And we can let them install all the nonsense they want. Oh look, we have drivers and things, and Armory Crate is doing its whatsoever. So this won't take long. We're still at 34 degrees Celsius on the CPU. How nuts is that? Right, well I can just let that do its own thing. Um, if I let you, yes you lot, be the, uh, just keep an eye on the screen. If anything changes, tell Calf and then Calf will tell me. But I'll try and read the screen. See if I can read your questions. Actually, I'll probably just do it from my phone. I need a little monitor just to the side of me here, so I can read stuff. There's many things I need, to be fair. Some hair would be a good start. Uh, comments, no. Where's my live video content? Live. Time for, oh. Of course, it doesn't show the actual live stream. Man, why do they make it so hard? Right, I'll have to go to YouTube. Mike's unboxing. Oh, I'm currently live, apparently. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, live chat. Okay, we have questions. Live chat. Let's... Right, there we go. That didn't take long, did it? So, last man standing. Uh, scan have been okay with me. I sent back a dead 3080 from Gigashite, and they swapped it for an EVJ for me back when you couldn't get cards for love nor money. To be honest with you, Scan are generally okay in most respects. I just, I did really want a 4070 Super. Scan do the Founders Edition. They're the only people that do the Founders ones. Well, they do the shipping on behalf of NVIDIA. I did want a 4070 Super Founders Edition because generally it's the cheapest one. Generally, it's the cheapest version, and also, it's kind of nice to have a Finder's Edition, because they're generally worth quite a nice bit of money. Uh, yes. Right, let's do this thing. So, yeah, uh, Finder's cards are nice. They, they look nice. 
they do tend to hold their value as well quite well. So Founders Edition for the 4070 Super here in the UK at the moment is, I think it's 579, plus then you scan or NVIDIA mandatorily add on next day overnight shipping, which is another nine pounds. So you've gone from, you're basically at five, well, 600 pounds for argument's sake. So I didn't really want to spend 600. That's a lot of money for a graphics card, especially a 4070 with only 12 gigs of RAM. So I went over to eBay and kept a look out. I think it's one of our Discord members actually posted that there was a deal on eBay for Sprout 10, which is their discount code at the moment for a few days. And uh, I just found this card just randomly and it's like, oh my God, that's the one I actually want. I've been looking for the slim edition for ages, but they're always like 650, 670 or more. And I managed to get it for 520 quid with a discount. So I was really, really pleased with that. Uh, Dom has gifted five mugs and boxing reviews and how-to memberships to Lord of Rectus. Me uh, I nearly said Melly. Kelly Enlow, G-Zone 2.0, and Rampage Uploads and Livestream. And Dave Aiken. Dave Aiken was gifted a membership as well. Captain White says, bagged an RTX 4080 for 750 a few months back when 48 Super released. That is a fantastic price. If I could have got a 4080 Super for 750 quid, I would have done, I think. That's a really good price. Uh, they're normally about 800 or more. Thanks, Cap, by the way. I appreciate you turning the lights on and off. I can't get to them. And I'd probably break them, anyway. Um, yeah, so... The card I got, the 4070 Super, MSI Gaming Slim, Gaming X Slim. Um, you generally, if you're lucky, you get one for about 670, which is about the best part of 100 quid more than the Founders Edition, give or take. And it's not that much faster. It is faster, definitely. It's got a higher clock, it's got better cooling, it's got RGB on it, it's a nicer looking card, in my opinion. And also, I'm an MSI fanboy, so clearly, in my PC now, I've got MSI mouse, MSI keyboard, MSI motherboard, MSI capture card, MSI gaming headset, MSI graphics card, and RAM, whatever that was. Cheers, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, yeah, so there's a... If I look in my MSI center now, there's about seven things that are all synchronized together, which makes me happy. I'm not too sure why it makes me happy, but it does make me happy. But I was really pleased to get it. It's a great price. I basically paid 4070 money for a 4070 Super. Um. Still installing. It's not the fastest, is it? <laughs> I shouldn't say that. It's, it's, it's an, it is a fast piece. Look at my watch that I'm not wearing. Anyway, any questions on the system or the case? I would be more than happy to answer them for you. I think I'm going to be more than happy to do some cable management on this at some point. Amzad. Amzad. Uh, Normal. And what is the eBay seller name? Uh, the eBay seller name was PC Parts for Less. And if you look them up, uh, you look in their contact details and it's VIP computers. I think they're in Cambridge, maybe. Rick H says, I think for now I'll stick with Intel Art cards. I'm looking forward to the next lot, the Battle Mage cards. They are looking very interesting indeed. Uh, Amzad Labib. Sorry if I've pronounced that completely wrong. Um, is it normal for CPU contact pads to have orange discoloration? I've seen posts on Reddit where people talk about fully brand new CPUs having orange spots on the contact pads and working fine. Um, not sure. Not sure. I've not come across that personally. I've not seen it discussed. Um, no, I don't know. CPU contact pads. Are you, you're talking about the... Um, 
the metal pads or you want about the little thermal interface pads they're normally blue or white or gray or something like the ones for m.2s i don't know if yeah i don't think i've ever noticed any discoloration the only thing i have noticed is if they get hot eventually they tend to look like um discharge the oil as they start breaking down so you get that kind of clear greasy residue like it looks oily Nearly done. Let's, uh, I want to get a Cinebench going on this. Right. William Bodie asks, how big is the cost of this PC now? I have no idea. It must be in the region, well, the 4090 is going to be the best part of two grand, if not more. The motherboard's about seven to eight hundred. The CPU, I think, is about three and a half, three and a half, maybe or so. So, case power supply I can't imagine you getting any change out of three and a half grand maybe heading towards four Forever asks I have an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 can I use the same cooler that you have now yeah yeah it's uh, fully compatible with AM3 AM4 AM5 and all the Intel sockets as well so yeah that cooler will work um, this is actually a really nice cooler. Very easy to install. Well, you saw I did it in very quick time. So Thermal Take 280 EX Pro, 8 RGB sync. I quite like it because it's minimalist. It's got a nice bit of RGB in the middle, but the fans, which you basically can't see the fans anyway. So what's the point of having RGB on them? Barry and it's keeping this nice and cool. 29 degrees. I oh, know. I'm sure I saw it go down to 29 degrees Celsius there. Barry asks, can you have a look at the Acer RX 7600 GPU? Uh, Acer's? I have heard that that exists. But I don't know whether I would take a look at it one, especially at the moment when there's a lot going on in the graphics market. Um, they're both mid tower cases, but one's a bit more mid tower than the other. So, uh, the Series Five Hundred is essential. Oh, is basically a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit taller because you can have three one forties in the front. So you can have up to a four hundred and twenty radiator in the front on this one, three sixty in here, uh, two eighty in the top. That'll take a three sixty. You've also got a little bit more height. So a little bit more easy for cable management, although that's a, a mute point, I suppose, on this one. Uh, other differences, top-mounted I.O. on this one. And on this one, you've got side-mounted I.O., which I prefer, obviously, for me here. That makes so much sense, because I can just plug in drives on the side. The top is a little bit difficult for me to get to because of the, uh, the size differential there. But other than that, it's a very similar deal. The other thing is, with this, you've got the swing-out door. With this, you just have a, a side panel which is re removed. Uh, there's there's a few subtle differences, but in general, they are from the the same family, so are kind of doing the same thing. Kelly said, I thought there was some older cooler that replaced the AMD black plate that won't work with AM5, but anything new should be okay. Yeah, no, this one uses the um, the AM4 uh, and AM5 plastic brackets, which go in the top and the bottom, and it just hooks over them. So yeah, it's no problem at all. Right, we've got to reopen the Armory Crate app. Now I've not done, obviously you've seen I've done nothing to this at all. So we're just going to go through and uh, going to agree to all the terms and stuff here. I don't want Aurora wallpaper thanks or none of that. I don't want to log into my account. It's going to try and do a bunch of updates, so that might affect the score, but I'm going to run Cinebench just to get an idea of how this thing actually performs. And we'll do, I think we'll do a five minute loop possibly. And we'll do the advanced benchmark. So let's just hit it with a multi-core load. We'll just do a single loop 
Let's see. Those fans are ramping up now. And temperature-wise, we're getting up to about 79 or so peak there. 74, we're running at 75, 74. That's not bad. Normally, those hit like 90 pretty quick. 75, 74 seems to be in and around that. Then drops down to 29, 30. That's great. I like that cooler. And we had a score of... I don't know if you can see it. Can you guys see that? Can't really stretch it. Uh, 33,808. I have no idea if that's good or not. I'm guessing it is. It sounds pretty impressive. But it didn't get very warm. Uh, not with a single core, because that is just horrendous. So 33... Yeah, that's actually not bad, because I'm pretty sure my 3900K gets... About 3,900. Uh, 39,000. But there's potentially stuff going on in the background. So just for a laugh, let's run Unigine Heaven. Oh, come on. It's only a 250 meg download. Open file. I cannot imagine what this is going to actually do to that graphics card and what sort of silly sort of um, results it's going to give. This is really snappy. Mind you, you expect so, it's like thousands of pounds. Um, I have no idea what this is going to score. Don't forget as well, Windows updates are happening in the background as well and also Oh, there's some coil wine. There's a quite a lot of coil wine. Can you hear that, Kath? Actually, I better mute that. There we go, mute that. Yeah, there's definitely some coil wine there, but we are getting somewhere in the region of about 600 frames per second. Oh, can you hear that? Yeah. Not sure if the... Can you hear that, the viewers? Can you hear the coil wine? There is some wine. That is ridiculously high frame rates, to be fair. But then for a 2,000 pound graphics card, you shouldn't have coil wine. I think I've saw 700 frames per second then. And it's only running at 47 degrees. <laughs> That's so stupid. Well, that is most definitely the fastest I've ever seen this program run. Uh, the graphics is currently running, they're saying, at 3,150 megahertz. That sounds wrong. That sounds way too high. There is coal wine coming from that thing. Whining like a cat giving birth. That was pretty loud. Fans are all running there. Wasn't it pops? It's quite an impressive system though, to be fair. Any guesses on what the score is going to be for Unigine Heaven? Bearing in mind, I think my um, Asus Dual 6600, the RX 6600, gets about 6,000 points. 
So I have no idea. Anyone want to hazard a guess? I I don't even actually know even close to what it's likely to get. Is it going to get, I don't know, 20,000? I'm hearing the wind outside your window more than anything. It's not actually windy now. No, it's, there's not much wind now. <laughs> Might be me. Ugly bob from you can, up north. Actually, you can probably hear the chimney. There isn't any noise. No, actually no. I will uh, I will put the microphone near the graphics card so you can hear what is how it sounds with panel on and temps. Can it run Minecraft? <laughs> it might. Definitely coil wine because it um, it changes pitch. Yeah, I think if it was running fourteen forty p or four k, it would be fine because it wouldn't have those ridiculously high frame rates. It does look good. Still a few little stutters going on there. I don't want no stutters at all for that much money. It does look nice though. And the processor is still, the CPU temperature is just 40 degrees. I'm not really doing a great deal there. Very nice. Anyone got any guesses in for how fast? 30,000. 30,000, okay. That was our I have no idea. I I literally have no idea. I would be completely guessing. I I have no idea what the score is likely to be or what it should be. So this is going to be a little bit of a letdown for me to some extent because could be the SSD. Could be. Yeah. To be fair, the um, the drive in here is only an old PCI Express Gen three. So twelve thousand. Yeah, I was way out. So basically, it's double what you'd get with a. Yeah, it's the same as having two RX 6600s in, so that doesn't sound quite right. Williams guess 48,000. James Miscellaneous 48,001. <laughs> so the score, I'm not sure if you can actually see that. <clears throat> Bob Fleming. So for those of you that are watch are listening on the podcast, FPS, average FPS. 495.1 with a Eugene Heaven benchmark 4.0 score of 12,471 points. Our minimum FPS was 12.7 FPS. Maximum FPS was a skull crushing 984.5 frames per second. Ne nearly at th I would love to break a thousand frames per second on here there must be a way i can do that i've never seen a thousand fps in a benchmark last time standing that doesn't sound right 12471 is my guess right fingers nice one good guess Right, so there we go. <clears throat> right, well, time has uh, escaped us, unfortunately, as time generally does. So what I am going to do, obviously, I'm going to carry on doing some benchmarks on this, um, possibly not tomorrow, but Monday, making some videos, and Tuesday as well, so we'll have a look at uh, seeing what's going on and seeing what the um, seeing what is going on with that. I'm pretty sure... The Armory Create stuff, and there's a Windows update, which I know needs to be installed as well, is waiting to go. So maybe it's because of that Windows update, all that kind of stuff. And the fact that, yeah, everything else we're doing. So yeah, I think that is, uh, I think that is pretty much it for tonight's stream. Because we've gone over, what time is it? Is it quarter past 11? No, it's 11. 11, exactly, almost. Exactly, almost. Uh, James says, test. James shut down menu on it too. All right, let's do that.
Um, have I still got my PC on? Actually, am I going to do that? Because I need to transfer it on a USB stick, don't I? Uh, yeah. All right, let me turn my PC on a minute. And I will attempt to do... I will attempt to show James's shutdown menu. Um, what have I got? Empty, empty, empty. <coughs> Bob Fleming. Oh, man, i got so much to pack away tonight. Uh, also, on another note, had a, uh, a Ryzen 7700 arrive from our good friends at AliExpress. £144 for a Ryzen 7 7700. Incredible value for money. They're like th nearly 300 on that Amazon. Just goes to show who's making money. And it ain't me. Because by the time I come to put it in a PC and sell it, someone will probably still try and say, well, I don't want to pay that much. Because I've seen another PC on Facebook for three quid. All right, James Miscellaneous. Uh, download. Potentially dangerous download. And save to our Lexar drive. Saving. Okay. Right, so I need to unplug the interwebs. Have you seen these backup over SQZilla? Super fast backups on restores. But back this up. I don't know. Is that part of what you need to do? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I might have to. Let's uh, close this. I'm probably going to end up putting another drive in here. Uh, this one I didn't know. Sometimes you do. Anything over 125 or 130 pounds is down to the individual company or um, yourself to report it. Anything under 130 gets done automatically at source. Alexar. Let's move that to the desktop. And extract. William Bodie's ready on Sunday. Blimey. Um, I need to turn off antivirus protection. Um, how can I turn it off? Ah, uh, what the hell. So, uh, which one do I want, James? Is it SE or is it light? I'm guessing it's the SE. Shouldn't need to turn off antivirus. I hope it runs before Defender quarantines it. Sometimes it does fast, other times not so fast. Both are diff, try both. Okay, <coughs> there we go. So there's James's shutdown menu. You're not going to be able to see that particularly well, and I can't really get it much closer, I don't think. Oh, I could zoom the camera in there, couldn't I? That'd be easier. Let me stood here like a spare what's that? That is about the closest I can get to it. So, you can change the clock or the background. Um, you have to download them from elsewhere onto a USB stick on another computer. Um, what else we got? So there's a lot of stuff in here, James. So you've got console, clear console, refresh explorer, control panel. So you click on that and open up your control panel or the old style control panel, I think that is. Full version has you in it too, Mike, if you want it. Battery report. That's given a battery report. Yep, I did here. 
the full version. So which is the full version? The SE one. I thought that's the one which is out. Opened. So yeah, battery reports, all that kind of stuff. Loads of things. Windows updates, utilities, DSM health checks. Press the key to continue. Very handy stuff in here. Windows information about your PC. Performance monitor. Perfmon. Just shortcuts to often used programs and utilities and a few command line stuff as well. Check for, what's that, GPT drive? The applications folder. That's pretty sweet. And the main part of this was actually, it's a shutdown tool. No full version is big. Ah, right. File SE is shrunken version. So the main thing was um, setting a shutdown. So this is automating shutdowns. So you can have like half an hour, an hour, three hours, or you can abort the shutdown. Use console to see info. Use console. Where the hell's that? I can barely see what I'm reading to be fair. I'm Dutch John asking, I want it, where can we get it? <laughs> Performance options. Very handy stuff. Display options for projecting. Get Wi Fi IP4 address. Not connected, so it probably won't do that. Oh, toggle console. So, what am I doing? <clears throat> There's an error come up there, but top right along window. Clear cons. Oh, it's closed. What's the light version? Wild Bill guessed the score would be twelve thousand. Well done, Wild Bill. I think Wild Bill's a bit fine. Ah, there is the um the shutdown menu. So if you just want the shutdown menu, so it automatically does that, then you can do that. So if you want to shut down in half an hour, it will shut the PC down in half an hour. So if you use your PC on at night and you're listening to music or videos, YouTube stuff, but you want it to shut down so you don't leave it running all night, this is a good way of automating a shutdown. You can abort that. Very good stuff. We'll have to have a look in more depth for that at some point. Because it's quite an interesting thing, and I'm sure there's going to be other people that are very interested and in getting their grubby little hands on that. And if James decides to uh, possibly do that, maybe uh, he can do that. James actually has got his own YouTube channel. Just look up James Miscellaneous, and you will find young James. So he might have some announcements on there, possibly. If not, just subscribe anyway, because he's a he's a generally all round nice guy. Oh, just grab me things. So Let's see the chat. Uh, but we'll eventually share with all. There you go. Thank you, James. Yeah, I'll have to have a closer look at that, especially when I can actually see the screen. <laughs> These things. Not the easiest of things to work with, and my eyes aren't the best. So, talk on so. Awesome stuff. Right, I think that is going to wrap things up for this evening. Hopefully you've enjoyed this content and uh, taking a look at the CTE technology. Nope, not CTE. That's the fans. The C There's CT technology. What's CTE? Centralized thermal efficiency. That's the other cases. This is the series range, not the CTEs. So you can tell brain's starting to go now. So this is the back to front or project zero or reverse inverted wiring. However you want to look at it, whatever it is. I actually quite like it and it makes cable management in the back a lot easier. Especially if you're actually thinking about it now, like in terms of diagnostics or when you're trying to get or work out why something isn't working. 
it's actually a lot easier to get to all those bits and pieces because like for instance now I can just go well it looks like there's something wrong with the RGB so I can unplug it and it's just super easy to get to and easier to put in and those little connections are hard work to get to at the best of times so yeah I think that's uh, it's pretty darn cool I'm sold. And the fact that it's actually built into the case, the, the biggest thing here, I think, the, the biggest takeaway of this whole thing is the fact that Thermal Take have actually built the technology or the availability into the case and they've not charged extra for it. They could have quite easily turned around and charged more for this than the standard Series 300 due to the fact that it's got the colour coded front panel, the colour coded rubber, um, the cutouts, manufacturing it. Obviously, it costs money to do those things. But it's basically the same price, give or take. I know there's some reductions, so it makes it look like the Series 300 is cheaper, but they're basically the same price. So if you're interested in one and you want to give it a go, and just put a normal ATX board in there, like I said, you can do. Normal ATX, normal micro ATX, absolutely fine in there, no problems at all, as we saw in Colin's build. If you want to check out, do a search on the channel for Colin Hilton's 80th birthday build. You can see it all in there. Uh, it's a great looking PC. If you want to get involved in the Project Zero stuff, then potentially this might be worth looking at. And then when those boards become more available and less expensive, then you can put one straight in and not have to worry too much about it. So, yeah, I think it's actually interesting in technology. And it's a little bit of a diversion from the mundaneness of what we're getting at the moment with a lot of motherboards and stuff. So, yeah, it's something nice and new. I like it. Anyway, thank you all for joining us on this Saturday evening. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit subscribe and the chime notification, and that way you, yes, you, will be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike, that's been Kath, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. Oh, and thanks to Thermal Take UK for sending us over these bits. Much appreciated. And thank you all for your super chats, your kindness, and your comments, and we'll catch you in the next video. And your gift donations. Oh, and your gift donations as well. Thank you very much. Gift Your gift memberships. memberships. That's the one. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye. Have a great Sunday. And I will take out the rear fan. That's Jan.